two, one. Welcome to the fundraising live stream for the National Get Organized for an Actual Revolution Tour. My name is Michelle Chai. I am a member of the National Revolution Tour and one of the leaders of the LA Revolution Club. And I'm Annie Day. I'm part of the National Tour to Get Organized for an Actual Revolution. And we are thrilled to be welcoming you to this live stream today uh, where we're out to raise $25,000 for the National Revolution Tour. Yeah, and today you're going to be hearing us making the case why you should donate, but also why you should go to others and, and making the case, you know, uh, why they should uh, contribute generously. I do want to, uh, first of all, welcome people again, but then also take the time right now to call your friends. If you're on social media, DM them, send them the link to this live stream, have them tune in um, and you know, to, to watch this live stream together with you and others um, and and have us make the case why they should donate and why they, they should spread this to other people. Um, so through today, we're going to be showing uh, different premiums that you can get for your donation today. You're going to be hearing from voices of other people, you know, that have donated, that um, have been raising funds for this revolution. Um, yeah. We're thrilled to be uh, welcoming. We know that there's people watching together in uh, Revolution Books in New York City, at Revolution Books in Berkeley, uh, people watching it together in South Central Los Angeles, in Chicago, um, and all across the country. So welcome. We're, we're going to accomplish something really important here together today. Um, so we want to just fill you in to begin with the mission of the national tour to get organized for an actual revolution, which has gathered volunteers from all across the country here on the ground in Los Angeles, anchoring a national movement for an actual revolution. And we are basing ourselves on and applying and wielding a declaration, a call to get organized now for a real revolution, which was published just a few months ago from the RevComs at RevCom.us. And um, this declaration and call talks about the rare times and circumstances we're in where revolution actually could be possible. And we are also very excited to announce and, and let people know about a new article from Bob Avakian, which you can also find on revcom.us. And Bob Avakian is the leader of this movement for revolution. He's the architect of a whole new communism, which is a framework for human emancipation. And he just published this piece this is a rare time when revolution becomes possible. Why that is so and how to seize on this rare opportunity. So here on this revolution tour, we are digging deeply into this work. Uh, we're spreading it. Um, and uh, we are, you know, we're reaching out to people all, all throughout Los Angeles, anchoring a national movement to organize forces for an actual revolution. Look, the problem that humanity suffers under is a, is a system of capitalism imperialism, and it brings about endless suffering for people here and all around the world. Environmental destruction and catastrophe, mass migrations, millions of refugees that are forced to leave their homelands, uh, the, the rise of fascism here in the US and all around the world. And this is a nightmare and it's needless. And it could be done away with through an actual revolution, but that revolution requires organization. It requires thousands of people stepping into this revolution, which means they have to be challenged. It means they have to be organized. It means that this revolution and the word of this revolution has to spread, which is what the volunteers here on this National Revolution Tour are doing. We're working together to apply what's in this declaration to reach out throughout all of society. And you're going to hear more about what we're doing, what we're learning, what we're changing. And to do any of this requires funds. It requires financial support for the volunteers to be able to live together. That means rent. For the volunteers to be able to hit the streets running day and night, that requires food and funds for food. It requires, um, you know, we've just spent just $10,000 alone for the printing of materials just here in Los Angeles to reach people. And we're going to show you some of the posters we've been wielding, the difference that makes. Um, it requires, we have the use today of the RN, the studio of the RNL, the Revolution Nothing Less show, which is a YouTube show that you can watch every week, Thursdays at 5 p.m., youtube.com slash the RevComs. And we're in their beautiful studio today being filmed by their high level cameras. All of that requires funds for the internet, for the lighting, for the sound, 
Um, so this is, you know, none of this is possible without your support. And that's what we're aiming to, to do here today is to raise the funds as part of a national movement for an actual revolution. And we're also, I should also just announce that we are thrilled uh, that Afia Nwanganza is broadcasting today's live stream over her FM show at WMXK, WMXP955.org. And Afia is from Greensville, South Carolina. She's a lifelong civil and human rights activist and a freedom fighter. So we wanna welcome Afia. We wanna welcome her listeners. We're really glad to be joined by you today. And uh, uh, you know, you can also find out how to contribute at revcom.us. There's all the links you can uh, donate on Venmo, on Cash App, on PayPal, uh, or call in a contribution. And for Afia's listeners, I'll read the number. It's 323-671-9839. So please give us a call, find out how to contribute. And we want to hear from you what you're thinking of today's live stream, what you're learning from it, what questions you have, how you want to step into the movement for an actual revolution to bring a whole new world into being. That's right. So we want to Thank everybody for tuning in, um, who has been spreading the word about this live stream and who's already who already has contributed. Um, and again, we're in the midst of a week long fundraising week to raise the twenty five thousand dollars. And so we do want to one begin, you know, by thanking people that have already donated the projects that have been you know, happening through the week, which you're going to hear more about through this live stream, uh, where people have been coming together, putting forward their ideas reaching out to other people to actually contribute and be a part of, you know, this growing revolutionary community, you know, where people coming together, um, learning more about this revolution. And at the same time, as they're learning more, contributing to it, which makes a huge difference. And we need a lot more of, you know, um, and, you know, this is, this is actually what is required, what the people of the world, whether they know it or not, actually are relying on us to you know for this to actually spread to take hold and and to for us to make a real revolution yeah i want to kind of by part of opening i want to read um from this declaration and call to get organized now for a real revolution and like i said you're going to hear more throughout today's live stream about how the revolution tour is is digging into and wielding and applying what's in this declaration and call but i wanted to open with this which is from part two of the declaration and call and it says revolutions are not possible all the time but are genu generally possible only in rare times and circumstances, especially in a powerful country like this. This is one of those rare times and circumstances. This system is in real trouble. It's caught up in crisis and conflicts for which it has no easy or lasting solutions. Throughout this country, the workings of this system have given rise to deep divisions which cannot be resolved under this system. Society is being ripped apart. Those who rule are locked in a bitter fight among themselves and they cannot hold things together in the way that they have in the past. And then the declaration makes the point, it says, although there are a lot of bad things connected with this, and it could lead to something really terrible, it is also possible that we could wrench something really positive out of it. Revolution to put an end to this system and bring something much better into being. Now the declaration and call goes on and it and it says more about about why that's so and how to how to to uh, build the movement for revolution to bring something much better into being and all of that is what's expanded on in this new article from Bob Avakian. We're really not going to do justice to all this today, but I did want to situate what the moment is and the fact that whatever people contribute today it has magnified impact because it is a rare time when revolution is possible and and we're gonna you're gonna hear more from us today about what revolution means the fact that there's a basis for hope for a whole better way the world can be you're gonna see from video from bob avaki and the leader of this revolution talking about what a revolution would make possible um, and i hope really inspire people to contribute generously and to ask many others to contribute and one of the things we want to kind of 
emphasize today is we want to put out a special call for people to sustain the National Revolution Tour. We've been on this tour for a while. We weathered through the COVID pandemic, and, and you're going to hear more some of the statements of people talking about the fact that we're still dealing with this on a global scale, this horrific pandemic leading to the death of, of millions of people. And because of the, it's happening in a system of profound inequities, uh, a lot of those deaths are needless. Um, um, but but uh, this National Revolution Tour has been going for a while and we're really fighting to break through. We've had a real impact, even in what we've done so far. But for that to be magnified, for that to spread, we need, we need funds, we need to raise this $25,000, but we also need to know what we can rely on in, an, in, a, in a monthly type of way, in a, in a consistent and ongoing way. How much support can come in regularly? So this means sustaining the National Revolution Tour. That means giving a certain amount on a monthly basis. Um, it's also part of building organization. Look, it costs just $30,000 a month for the National Revolution Tour to operate, for the housing, for the food, for transportation, for the production costs, for the RNL show, for printing, like I talked about. But we, you know, and that's just, that's the bare minimum, but we have to do a hell of a lot more than just operate the National Revolution Tour on the basis on which we're already existing. We need to expand that. We need to scale that up. That requires a tremendous amount of resources, and it's maddening to be able to, to, to say that, you know, what's true, that we could change everything about the way the world is organized right now. We can make an actual revolution, but to do that, we have to build up the forces for revolution, and we have to reach people all across the country. We have to reach people in the hinterlands of Arkansas, in, in Connecticut, in Washington State, which are suffering now under a tremendous heat wave. We have to reach people all across the country and be able to contend on a national scale. And we are way too constricted by a lack of resources. So your funds can be part of changing all of that, whether that means you give $5 a month, whether that means you can give $50 a month, or whether that means you can commit to give or to raise $500 a month. All of this matters and it comes together to add up to what's required to reach people with the message that we need an actual revolution and revolution is possible. And this means not just becoming a sustainer yourself, but be part of building up the sustainer base and pledge to raise a certain amount every month. Take this to others, ask for funds. Um, and building up the regular sustainership for the National Revolution Tour is a way that everyone can be part of the movement for an actual revolution today. So I think you've heard us say what we're gonna talk some about in the live stream today, we're gonna talk about how we're wielding this declaration and call, and, and you're gonna hear directly from Bob Bavakian, the leader of this revolution, on what this revolution is aiming for. You're gonna hear some about how we're struggling with people to step into the revolution. And you're also gonna hear, we're excited to bring you voices from the national movement for revolution, people from Chicago, people from New York who are stepping into this, who are part of this. And we learn from them, they learn from us what we're doing on this national tour, and it's part of building up the, the muscles and the infrastructure nationally to really reach people and, like I said, to contend on a national level. Uh, you're also going to hear from one of the editors of the RNL show. We're going to bring on Atlas Winfrey to talk some about what, what they're doing with the RNL show and what your funds, what difference your funds can make. Um, and you're also going to hear from each other people who are contributing to the National Revolution Tour, why you're contributing from different perspectives, from different levels of experience all across the country. And you're also gonna get a chance, which Michelle mentioned, mentioned to get special premiums. And this is one of the reasons people should tune in and people should tell others to tune in is you will be getting uh, special premiums, um, I know, gifts uh, for your donations. Um, and I wanna let you know, uh, there's two categories of things people can get for your donation today. And the first is a set of books from Bob Avakian. And I mentioned him earlier. Bob Avakian is the, has developed a new, a, a framework for human emancipation, a new communism. Um, you know, we follow BA, we go out and challenge people. If you want to get free, you need to follow BA too. There's never been a leader like this in this country, and there's no other leader playing the role that he's playing in the world today. And some of his work is a lot of what we base ourselves on and what we take out to others. And there's really nothing like this in terms of a storehouse 
for of, of, of human understanding for how to change the whole world. So the first is this book, Basics, which is the handbook for revolution. It's a book of quotations and essays from BA. And it's what we on the revolution tour, we, we dig into, we dig into and discuss some of these quotations together. We take these out to, to others throughout society and we challenge people, you can't change the world if you don't know the basics. So if you give a donation of $50 or more, ask for a copy of basics. If you give a donation of $50 or more, you can also ask for a copy of science and revolution on the importance of science, the application of science to society, the new synthesis of communism and the leadership of Baba Vakian, which is an interview with a follower of Baba Vakian, a woman named Ardea Skybreak, who is a biologist. She's a scientist in her own right. And in this book, she talks a lot about the scientific method well, she talks a lot about what's in this uh, subtitle, which I won't recapitulate. Um, but there's really like nothing like this to understand the world, to understand what we're up against and the struggle to make a revolution, and also to understand why we need a scientific method to change all of society. Um, you could also, if you can give $50 or more, you can get that, uh, or you can get a copy of the Constitution for the new socialist republic in North America, which is a concrete plan for how society could be organized day one after the revolution. It's a legal document that walks through a whole different form of organizing human society, a whole different economic system, political system. This is a breakthrough work that needs to be dug into and it needs to be spread throughout all of society. Like there's an actual plan for how we could organize society in a whole different way. Um, so if you give $50 or more, you can get one of these books and I'll tell you some about some of the other books in a second. I wanna turn this over to Michelle to talk about some of the other premiums we have here today. Yeah, so I'm really excited about these premiums. Um, there's uh, two volunteers that have donated their artwork one of which is a beautiful handmade floral crochet baskets, which we're gonna show on the screen, um, some of the images of that. And anybody who gives 50 or more dollars can ask to be sent one of these beautiful, these are all handmade from recycled material, um, you know, uh, and the little flowers are actually hand crocheted. Um, and she also sends a statement, um, which I'm going to read in a second, um, but, and then there's these that you're seeing on the screen now, which are individually uh, flowers, which she also hand crocheted. And you can get three of those for 25 or more. If you make a $25 or more donation, you can ask to be sent. Um, these, these are really beautiful. These took a lot of you know, work, but she sends these baskets and these flowers with a lot of love. And she sends us her statement. Um, and she says, I'm gonna read it in Spanish and I'm gonna translate it in a second. So she says, hola a todos, estoy donando unas piezas de manualidades a la gira de revolución para recaudar fondos. Esta es una manera muy importante para mí de contribuir al movimiento de revolución, ya que personalmente odio lo que la policía hace contra la gente de color y otros. Odio como el sistema pone a la gente en contra y el racismo que genera cómo las mujeres y personas de diferentes géneros son tratados como menos que seres humanos. Por eso estoy contribuyendo a estos muchachos para que trabajen hacia una revolución y ponerle un fin a este sistema criminal. Yo quiero que haya igualdad y no racismo. Tenemos que acabar con eso. Por eso les pido a la gente que, que pueda contribuir, que apoyen a la gira de revolución con lo poco o lo mucho que pueda. So she says, hello everyone. I am donating my handmade crafts to the revolution tour to raise funds. This is a really important way for me to contribute to the movement for revolution. I personally hate what the police do to people of color and others. I hate how this system sets people against each other, the racism it generates, how women and, and people of other sexual orientation are treated as less than human. This is why I am contributing to the to the work that these young people are doing to make a revolution to put an end to this criminal system. I want equality, not racism. We have to put an end to this. This is why I'm asking people to contribute to the revolution tour with small and large donation. Thank you all. So you can see again these uh, beautiful pieces that you know this person is um, contributing as you know somebody who doesn't have a lot of funds but actually 
you know, was able to make these um, handmade crochet baskets um, to be able to raise funds for this National Revolution Tour. And this is a really important way, you know, that again, as she says in her statement, um, that everybody can contribute to this revolution. If you have an understanding, and as you heard in her statement, hating just even seeing, you know, the way that people are treated as less than human and actually seeing that there is a way to put an end to this and finding the ways to contribute to this revolution. Um, and so those are, that's the first set of premiums. The second is we have these beautiful postcard sized prints of this artist um, who is a member of the Revolution Club um, in another state. And, you know, they're uh, $50 each of these. Uh, if you donate 50 or more dollars, you can get a, a postcard sized print of these um, pieces, which you can see on screen now. Um, and 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 then she's also offered to make custom portraits for 200 um or more which will show you an example of what that looks like um so sending your donations and ask to get any of these premiums um sent yeah and she can i think probably write about what the what these portraits are you'll just saw on your screen um a couple of really beautiful abstract pieces that's a, a print of george floyd um, she was working on a series of people who were whose lives were lost due to this system. Um, and then this beautiful custom portrait, um, if you give $200 or more, uh, the other ones are $50 or more. And I, I think one of the things I really think is important about these uh, uh, premiums is it's an example of the ways people can step into and, and um, uh, contribute their strengths, contribute their creativity to the movement for an actual revolution through doing what they can, through making their artwork um, and offering it as something to raise funds. And for those of you who want to make a contribution, this is a way of us and of these other people saying thank you. Thank you and it matters. Um, and then I, the last other uh, premiums I want to mention are um, so those books from Bob Avakian that I mentioned were for $50 or more. And if you, when you give on Venmo or Cash App or PayPal, or if you call your contribution in, you can just talk to the people on the other phone, on the other line, on the end of the phone about, uh, about, you know, what you want to get for your contribution. Um, and the other elements are these books from Bob Avakian. And this would be for $75 or more. Um, you can get a copy of Bob Avakian's memoir, From Ike to Mao and Beyond, My Journey from Mainstream America to Revolutionary Communist. And this is a memoir, maybe later in the, in the live stream, Michelle, you can talk some about the impact this memoir has had on you. I know certainly for me, learning about Bob Avakian's life, who this is, who, who this person is, how this kind of leadership developed um, through the, 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 the 1950s, uh, through finding out and playing doo-wop and sports, uh, through the struggles of the 1960s and beyond. Um, you know, you really get to know this leadership, you get to know this person, his humor, his uh, spirit, his uh, determination to, to fight with people about what's true, and his recognition of the potential for a whole better world, way the world could be, and determination never to give up on that. This all comes through, and it's a, it's, um, there's a lot to learn uh, about Bob Avakian, about the scientific method, about what it means to lead a revolutionary party um, and a revolutionary movement. So I really encourage people, if you can make a contribution of $75 or more, you can get a copy of this memoir and get, get it for a friend if you already have it. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great gift. Um, and then the last book I want to show people is a copy of The New Communism, The Science, The Strategy, The Leadership for an Actual Revolution and a Radically New System society on the road to real emancipation. So these are some of the premiums you can get for your contributions if you give $75 or more, if you give $50 or more, or that custom portrait if you can give a donation of $200 or more. Um, and again, this is uh, it's our way of saying thank you. It's, it's a tremendous storehouse of, of revolutionary scientific understanding to know and to change the world. So make a contribution and, uh, and you can get one of those uh, premiums. And we did get some new sustainers during this 10-day uh, 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 
fun drive to date. We have a $25 uh, sustainer, a $100 sustainer, somebody who's able to sustain at $5, one sustainer up their donation from $15 to $20. And, and you know, look, thank you for those who gave. All of this matters, it adds up. We are starting our fund drive with $3,912. And we're aiming to go as far as we can in this $25,000 while you're with us here today. Um, every contribution, all of it matters and it adds up. Um, so I want to open by reading a, a matching challenge from a retired hospital worker, somebody who made a contribution and is challenging you to give. And here's what they said about that and why. They said, I'm donating $1,000 as a matching challenge, and I'd like to share my thoughts as I considered the amount to donate. Years ago, I was hired by a hospital in a job only requiring a high school education. I, I retired with a fund set up by the hospital whose interest alone gives me much more money than most people in the world make through backbreaking labor. This country would like us to believe that this is due to living in a democratic country that rewards hard work. What utter BS. And they said, as I have learned, especially through the writings of Bob Vakian, the, mass, the vast majority of humanity lives in horrendous conditions because this system, along with other capitalist imperialist countries, feed off the cheap labor of impoverished people put and kept in the, those conditions through endless wars and repression. They give a portion of that blood money to some sections of ordinary people within the home country to buy their allegiance. This is why I can live comfortably only with a high school education and while billions around the world, even many with college degrees, live in squalor. Well, F their allegiance. A better world is possible. And this is why I'm giving what I can to help, a make, to help make the revolution necessary to get us to a better, more just world. And it's why you should give as much as you can as well. So that's our first matching challenge. That's $1,000 this person is giving, and we're asking you to match it in this next segment. Um, and I just think that captures powerfully the contradiction and the fact that we live in a country with like a million millionaires. That's, that kind of inequity is insanity, but it's because of a system that's not permanent. It's a system that can be overthrown and it's a system that, that as long as it stands, there's no future for the planet, for the billions of, of, of youth here and all over the world, and yet it can be overthrown, which is what this National Revolution Tour is organizing forces for, and it's why your funds matter so much to contribute to this tour, because it, to do anything, it requires funds. Yeah, I think that's really important. And, you know, I wanted to begin like sharing, you know, just even off of that, like sharing some of the the things that actually have begun to come together. Um, and, you know, in, in particular, you know, these things where people have um, taken up these, you know, as some people, you know, have heard me mention, hopefully, in the Revolution Nothing Less show, these revolutionary change jars, you know, that we have one here today, you know, that is a very basic, but also very important way that people are beginning to take up this revolution, you know, and, and you'll hear a statement, you know, um, very soon of somebody who actually has begun to take one of these change jars to their homes. And it's a very important way that, you know, people, not just for themselves to put the money into the jar, but to have it in their homes together with, you know, the declaration and call that everybody that comes over can drop money that can spark these conversations. You know, that's actually what we want. We actually do want to hear people, you know, uh, that are engaging, you know, this revolution that have questions that have, you know, that begin to think about, oh, wait a minute, this is going to take like, you're talking about going up against the system that's going to take some, you know, some, <laughs> a lot of people and a lot of resources, you know, which is exactly the point, you know, um, yes, it is going to take many people and, and it is going to take many resources and both for the immediate impact that we're talking about for to break through this permanence, this idea that people think that everything that they see, everything that they read about in the newspaper, that they see on TV, you know, in the news that they hear, that they experience themselves, you know, that they think that this is something that's just the way that things are, right? That think that it's because of a God, that think it's because of, you know, so-and-so down the street that's just, you know, got everybody in messed up ways of thinking, you know, but, but actually that don't actually recognize that it's a system, you know, and that's what we're bringing to people, you know, that's 
that's why it really matters, you know, that these people that are on the ground, you know, myself, Annie, you know, and others in the National Revolution Tour, you know, that are de are dedicating ourselves to go, you know, every day out, you know, and, and on these hot days, you know, I can speak, you know, for it's really hard, you know, going through and, and you know, but meeting a lot of these people that when, you know, you're bringing this to them and it actually does you know, you can hear some of the 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 hope in, in their voice or the beginning of like, okay, wait, you're saying that we don't have to live this way, you know? It's a very important and you know, and 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 it needs to spread, you know? And this is what part of the what this revolutionary change jar, the the role that it, it plays is people that are stepping into this, people that are learning about this that are getting deeper into right that get this book basics that are getting deeper into what is what is it going to take to make this revolution um getting into bob avakian hearing you know his speeches getting into this together with others right that have this in their home that are when they have people over on the weekends or when they have people over whenever they're telling them i'm raising funds for the revolution and if you got you know your your change that's left over from your you know laundry day drop them in 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 this in this jar you know and then the revolution collects them every week and you know this is it's very important contributions you know and this is what the, this revolutionary uh change jar this is one of the things that's beginning you know very beginning but it's beginning to happen you know in some of these neighborhoods and i want to share you know, in, in one neighborhood in South Central Los Angeles, just this week, um, we've actually raised $149 from 18 donors, you know, having a, you know, I was actually out there one of these days uh, while we were making these change jars and we were set up in a corner and people were stopping their cars, you know, and people were coming up and dropping money in the change jar, you know, seeing us there with the shorties in the neighborhood, you know, making these change jars and, you know, some not saying a word to us, but wanting to contribute, you know, um, and this is, these are very important things, you know, and, and as we speak, there's actually a food sale going on in this neighborhood where people are, co are cooking uh, barbecue dinners um, where one person who you're going to hear from is, um, you know, uh, uh, grilling up some, some chicken and another person is, um, uh, you know, making some rice and beans that to go the, with, with the barbecue din dinner and, you know, and then they went out this whole week to their churches. They went to their neighbors, um, and they were putting up posters, spreading the word about this 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 dinner, right? And telling people to come come by this dinner, you know. And I want to give a shout out actually because our gather gathered while this food sale is happening, and they're watching this live stream. So I do want to give a shout out to people that are watching and are raising funds for the revolution. And I want to read a, a statement um, because off of this. Um, this food, sale, people went to, you know, to you know to these uh, butcher shops, this carniceria, where somebody actually donated four slabs of ribs, you know, for this uh, for this dinner, you know, and he sends his uh, statement. He says, I support this group because I think it's a good cause. You're out there trying to help everyone. I'm very busy now, but this is how I can participate which is a very important way to participate, you know, where it is the many different people coming together, you know, and then we had another volunteer who took the four slabs of, uh, of ribs and marinated it, you know, and then sent it back to be able to be cooked today, you know. This is a very collective and very important way that people are being brought together that, again, cannot, you know, give a lot of uh, funds, but can actually put their ideas and their skills together to actually be able to get this out to other people and and raise the, the, the funds that this, revolution tour very much needs, you know, to be able to have the kind of impact that we are aiming to have. Um, and so with that, I want to go and play this this uh, clip from one of the chefs that is, you know, right now, I believe, and on the grill making these, uh, you know, these dinners. So why don't we go to that? We've done this revolution thing for Bob because we believe in what he's fighting for and we want to raise some money for the whole cause of the world to bring people together in this world. So by coming out to participate in this dinner, fundraising we have, it would be very supportive of everybody to come out and bring your families to enjoy yourselves and eat some very good food. And fight for the cause that we're 
fighting for in America. And I want everybody to know that we as the people will win this fight if we just keep and stay together. We're going to also play, I think it's a good time to play the audio. So that was one of the chefs uh, who's cooking, like Michelle said, on the grill right now, selling plates of uh, food to raise funds for the National Revolution Tour. Uh, I think we should go to the audio of a woman talking about why she's taking up one of those revolutionary change jars. I'm fundraising for the Revolution Tour because I think that we need a change in this world. Um, we all need to come together and support um for this revolution you know they need all the support that they can get um i chose to actually get a change jar and um put you know any spare change in there and have any of my friends and family put any change that you know they have around just to uh put in a jar and you know every penny and dime it adds up so come out and support and um we all need just to come together and just make, you know, a change in this world. Well, I think she said it well. We all need to come together and fight for a change in this world. And that's going to take a struggle. It's going to take serious heart and sacrifice. Um, but there's nothing more important than people could give to, than, than people can be part of, is the struggle to bring a whole better world into being because it's possible. We don't have to live this way. Um, we have raised so far $200 of the $1,000 challenge. So thank you to those who've given. Uh, call your friends, ask them to give. Spread the word about this on social media to you know DM some people, text a bunch of people, let them know they can tune in and they can hear the argument for what the National Revolution Tour is doing and why it needs to be supported. Um, we want to kind of take a minute, I think, now to talk some about what the National Revolution Tour is doing and in particular how we're wielding this declaration and call to get organized now for a real revolution, which I talked about and, and, and began to read from. Um, but first, I think to help intro that, we want to play some of the footage. Uh, just on June 12th, we had these marches here in South Central Los Angeles and um, support marches in New York and Chicago to show the world that we're getting organized now for revolution and nothing less. Um, and, uh, you know, again, this is part of projecting that there's a force beginning but serious that's out to make an actual revolution to overthrow this system, yes, in the belly of the beast. Um, so why don't we open with some of that footage and then we'll talk some more about, about the difference this makes and, and why you should support it. So let's go to that footage. It's the time. Time for revolution. We have a plan. Plan for revolution. We have a leader. Leader for revolution. On June 12th, the MCs kicked off the rallies. All right, everybody, my name is Michelle Chai. I'm going to be an MC today. Look, we're out here in South Central on Imperial and Western today on June 12th, together with people in other parts of the country. And we're here to show the world that we are getting organized now for revolution, nothing less. That's right. And I want to say what we mean by a revolution. We mean nothing less than to bring down, to overthrow, and to dismantle this system. Defeat, I said defeat, its armed forces and its institutions of repression. We are marching as a powerful force against one of the most hated symbols of the murderous police forces that protect this system, the LA Sheriff's Department. We are gonna be marching to the, through the streets of Harlem, through the projects to the New York City Police Department at the 28th Precinct. Why are we going there? Because the police kill, terrorize, and brutalize black people over and over and over again. And if this was the only thing that this system was doing, it would be enough to make a revolution to bring this whole system down. But unfortunately, 
strategy and someone named Bob Avakian who's brought forward a way that we can actually win. One big thing we got is we got a leader for this revolution in Bob Avakian. We got a leader who has brought forward a new framework for human emancipation. A leader who knows the way out of this mess. Who wields a scientific method to deeply understand what we're up against, what the obstacles are, but also how we can overcome these obstacles. He has used that method to develop a plan and a strategy for making revolution in a country like this. He has authored a blueprint of a vision the way that society could be after the revolution and after this system is done away with. It's called the Constitution for a New Socialist Republic in North America. I am a follower of Baba Bacon, and if you want to get free, you need to be a follower of Baba Bacon too. I want people to stop for a second and look around. Look around the people that have come here together. We're going to march from different backgrounds, different nationalities, different life stories. And we're going to march through these streets and we're going to call on people. People that don't know that there's a way out of this. People that have been brought together today who don't usually are brought together. We're overcoming these divisions and this antagonism and this isolation and this system. Ten seconds. So I think that gives a, a powerful sense of what we've begun here on this National Revolution Tour, what difference it makes to have a national movement beginning for an actual revolution. Um, and then they talk some about what the, the this declaration call, which you can read on revcom.us. And as Michelle said, this is a plan. It's a plan and it's a tool that people can use to understand why we need a revolution and how to go to work now to build that movement for an actual revolution. And here on the National Revolution Tour, we use this as a, as a kind of measuring stick. Um, you know, are we doing what's described in here? Are we learning from the agitation that's that's in here? Are we really grabbing hold of the fact that we are in a rare circumstance when revolution could be possible? What about how things are changing and and you know the rise of this fascist, these fascist forces, um, which which uh, you know, like I said, is is part of what's pulling this whole system apart. And the fact that that it is, as as B. A. says in his Bob Vakian B. A. says in his new piece, it is a rare time when revolution becomes possible um, and why that is so, and then how to seize on this rare opportunity. So this declaration, it says, it's a call to everyone who can't stand the way, that cannot stand the world the way it is. And then it walks through who it's reaching, people who are sick and tired of so many people being treated as less than human. People who know that the claim of liberty and justice for all is a cruel lie who are righteously enraged that injustice and equality go on and on and on. So it's a call to all these kinds of people. Well, that describes a lot of people, even as a lot of these same people are putting up with too much of the way the world is, they also hate it. So part of what we're trying to do is try to figure out who do we reach out to all sections of society that are described by that. That means we go out to the, um, 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 to the, the, the scenes, the cultural scenes where we can find alienated youth, the punk scenes, the hip hop shows, the skate parks. And we put our heads together to think about, okay, how are we going to actually capture people's imagination? Because they actually do think that this is the way things have to be, even as they also hate it. Um, and then the declaration call also talks about how organizing people into this revolution, it means reaching out to all sorts of people, not just where there are protests and rebellions against oppression and injustice, but everywhere throughout society. Um, so we're trying to think about like, how do we, how do we break through? So when we go out, we're not just talking to people in the ones and twos, but trying to figure out how to gather a crowd. One of the places we go to is like a shopping area where, where a lot of the youth, including youth from the oppressed uh, neighborhoods gather to be seen and to shop. Um, and so we, you know, we bring soap boxes, we bring big banners, we bring loud sound systems and think about how do we creatively capture people's imaginations so that they can break out of the suffocation and, and like I said, the, the, the ceiling that's put on people that this is just, it is what it is and we can't change it. No, we're going out to change everything. Um, so that's some of what we're doing on this tour to apply what's in this declaration, but again, to do 
any of that, it requires funds. It requires funds for the materials, for the tables, for the food. Um, and like I said, we have to do a lot more than just what we've already been doing. We have to scale all that up. It means big old displays. We want to put ads out into the local papers. You know, we want to be able to uh, airdrop people in a certain location, a video file. Um, we want to be able to put ads on buses uh, to reach people, to capture people's imaginations that this is not the best of all possible worlds. A whole different world is possible. But to do that requires funds, to reach people requires funds, so contribute. Contribute generously. That's right. And the declaration goes on to say that spreading the word about revolution and getting people together in real life and online to grapple with why an actual revolution is necessary, what such a revolution involves, and what kind of society this is aiming for. This will enable people who are new to the revolution to themselves become organizers for this revolution and to recruit more and more people to do the same. And on this basis and through the growing ranks of the revolution, acting together as an increasingly powerful force, it will be possible to attract and organize the necessary numbers and build up the necessary strengths to be in the position to do what needs to be done. And, you know, some of that would, you know, what Annie is just talking about and, you know, going out and reaching people, but then also bringing people together, you know, which is a lot of the going up against the, the ways in which society just tells people to go to look at society as just an individual, but then also, you know, coming together with people that people don't aren't, you know, in this society, like, people are not even used to talking to their neighbors, you know, like, that's how isolated that's how you know, this society has got us like looking at each other as if, you know, looking out for yourself and I can't even trust my neighbor, you know, but breaking through that and actually bringing people together to, as the declaration says, you know, understand what this revolution is about, what it actually is, you know, what's needed this revolution. And some of the ways that we've been doing that is both, is both online and in real life, you know, as Annie uh, was talking about while she was showing you guys basics, the book of quotations from Baba Bacon, which is, uh, you know, one of the ways that I started when I joined this revolution, you know, sitting down with somebody in the revolution club and reading some of those quotes together. You know, that was the first book I actually was given to me as a gift, you know? And, and one of the ways that we're, that we're doing this is bringing people together on Zoom discussions to get into these, uh, these uh, quotes, you know? And how do we understand them? And, you know, what does this mean? What does this look like in reality, you know? And, um, you know, people raising like, hey, I didn't agree with this chapter, you know, and getting into that, you know, um, getting people together in the neighborhoods, you know, to talk about this, one of the, these questions that so many people are agonizing over, where a lot of these youth are caught up fighting and killing each other, you know, where right down the street from them, people are being shot, people are being chased down the street, you know, because they belong to one gang or another, you know, and, you know, bringing people together, watching Baba Bakian, you know, get into these questions with people in other cities, you know, through a Q&A, &A, and, and actually getting into how do we understand why people are in this situation? You know, the actual science behind that and how exciting it is to, for people to actually understand that it's not just people that are all messed up and this is just the way that they are, but how do they go from being beautiful children running around and being playful to like what this society trains people to view them as irredeemable monsters, you know, like this is, there is a way to understand this and the preciousness of Baba Vakian and what's actually brought forward, what is brought forward to be able to understand that, you know, and these are some of the ways that we've been bringing people to get into these, into these questions, you know, people that are agonizing, people that are like older, older people that are seeing these youth going like, I want to do something so that these people are like, actually have a future, you know, um, and, and then one of the other ways has been, you know, we have like these monthly revolution club meetings, you know, where we had the first one, you know, a few weeks ago and people began to dig into this declaration and call, you know, it was very exciting and, you know, very people from many, uh, different perspectives that came together that are seeing what the revolution is doing that want to learn more about it, but that also brought, you know, their, the, you know, saying, yeah, everybody knows what this revolution, everybody's here because of this revolution. But then once we started getting into things, people see, you know, people understand revolution very differently, you know, and so we're able to get into these questions together, you know, all of the, these things are very exciting, you know, we're experimenting in these neighborhoods, you know, again, where people 
are not used to talking to each other, you know, to that are beginning to like, you know, some of these people that we're working with are like beginning to go to their neighbors that they don't feel very comfortable going to, you know, because they just don't talk to them, you know, but are going to them, you know, and, and, and are talking to, they're learning that, you know, they're learning more about this revolution and they're telling their neighbors that they all, that they're doing this. And, you know, and it's, it's very exciting and it's, it's a very, you know, um, beginning process is, you know, and, and, and again, this is going up against this, you know, um, this system that tells people to just look out for themselves, you know, and we've been putting up, you know, these, uh, these posters, I'm going to show these posters that we've been getting up. It's, I don't know if people could see it, but <laughs> why don't you read it? Uh, it's, so the, this is a quote from the Declaration and Call, right? And it says, with the revolution, it's not everyone out for themselves and against everybody else. It's all of us together who can't stand to live like this and hunger for something much better, something truly emancipating. And then it says, we are human beings. We refuse to accept slavery in any form. You know, this is this is what, you know, we've been putting up in the different polls and neighborhoods, you know, that is actually, you know, speaking to this, that, you know, it's it's, a very, I feel it's a very powerful, you know, quote to be putting again in a neighborhood where people are pinned against each other, each other, and you know, and this, all of this takes funds, you know, again to be able to to host the Zoom meetings, to be able to rent the spaces, to bring people together, you know, to to have the equipment, you know, the TVs and the different things that people are able to watch these clips from, you know, that where people are are you know uh, being brought together and getting into these questions together that again very much matter, you know. To be able to understand, you know, where all this comes from and how, what are we going to do about it? Yeah. To make the posters, mm -hmm. to get the staples, staple guns, to get the mm -hmm. tape, to be able to put these on poles, all of these materials. If we're going to contend with people ideologically, if we're going to change their thinking, we have to be able to put these things on the walls and then, which is that, that costs the bare minimum of what's required, the printing costs, the, 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 you know, she's talking about the zoom, you know, or the text, uh, the text blast that the revolution, national revolution tour does all of that requires funds. But then imagine what it could change if we actually could do a whole billboard campaign with that quote. With the revolution, it's not everyone out for themselves and against everybody else. It's all of us together who can't stand to live like this and hunger for something much better, something truly emancipating. What could it change if that was actually reaching people all throughout society up against all the me first, do for self, blah, 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 that you see on YouTube, that you see in the advertising that reaches us through the ideology of the way this whole system operates. And again, the way people are set against each other under the system, that's going to require funds. So we've raised $430 of the $1,000 matching challenge. And we are, we are at $4,342 of our $25,000 goal. So this matters. I want to thank everybody who's contributing. And I want to call on you and ask you to reach out to others. Have them tune in. Have them hear the arguments. We've got a lot more we're going to show for you today. We've got these premiums that we can offer for people who are contributing the books from Bob Avakian, um, the the uh, crocheted flowers that were that were made by a supporter of the revolution, or the prints. And all of those can be our thank you gifts and can be gifts that you can give to others and say why. And there's one other thing I want to say about the look. You know, you were talking about building organization. When you ask people to contribute to the, to the revolution, you're spreading the word of this revolution. You know, the declaration and call makes the point. It says, we need to change, we need to urgently change the situation where not nearly enough people know about the revolution and are, and are with it. Well, some of how you change that is you ask people to make a contribution to the National Revolution Tour. You ask people to make a contribution to those who are wielding this declaration and call, who are spreading the word about the revolution. And like I said, I said, then when you ask for funds, you have to say some things about it. Why are you supporting this? And 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 you've already heard some from people today and about why they're supporting this and why they are why they are calling on others to support it. And I think some of what you hear is very inspiring because people are making a sacrifice for a better world, better world. A sacrifice that's not just for themselves and not just for their family members, but it's for the whole world. It's for the emancipation of all of humanity. That's raising people's sights. So when you ask people to make a contribution, you're struggling to raise, to raise their sights, to not just be about them and themselves and, and accumulating their miserly cash and wealth, but again, to make a sacrifice for a whole better world.
Yeah, that's right. And and part of, you know, even to go back to this, um, you know, this basics, which again, I really want to encourage people, you know, if you if you don't have basics, get basics, make a contribution today, and you you know, you'll be able to you know, you'll be able to get this as a premium, you know, or if you have it, as Annie said earlier, you know, and you know, somebody who needs to know about this revolution, who needs to actually work to Baba Vake, to Baba Vake, and get this for them as a gift, you know, and like it was given to me when I first stepped into this revolution as a gift, and get into this, you know, it, you know, it really matters, you know, for people to, to actually uh know about this leader to to get into the works that he works that are in this book are in this book you know and as part of this i actually want to show a clip you know from again june 12th um, where um where we went through we marched through this neighborhood and we actually read quotes from this book basics you know and i want to show a really powerful clip that um actually happened you know in this neighborhood where dijon kizzy um was murdered by the LA County sheriffs, you know, and and we stopped at his memorial and we read um, one of the in basics. So I want to go to that. I hope everybody understands what they're looking at. This is a memorial made in the neighborhood for Dijon Kizzy. This is a young man who was murdered right here on this spot by the sheriffs housed at the very station we're going to be marching to today. What was his crime? He was riding his bicycle. No more generations of our youth here and all around the world whose life is over, whose fate has been sealed who have been condemned to an early death or life of misery and brutality, whom the system has destined for oppression and oblivion even before they are born. I say no more of that. So the Revolution Club is delivering this wreath today with that quote that was just read from the writings of Baba Vakian to be put in this memorial. This memorial is a sign of this life and so many lives that are lost and stolen under this system, but it's also a reminder, a reminder of the lives that could be lived and fulfilled if we swept aside this system and brought into being a whole new world that not only did not hunt down and kill black, brown, and, and other people, but actually had something for people to live for, a society to contribute to, a way to go to work, to be part of liberating humanity and saving our planet. Unlike this system, which has millions of people that it finds useless because it cannot use and exploit them, so it sets them up in neighborhoods where they fight and kill each other and then kills them on top of it with its police and sheriffs. I choose revolution. I choose revolution. I choose revolution. I choose revolution. So that captures a lot of what we are bringing in the neighborhoods of the oppressed, of what we're reaching out throughout all of society with the message and the challenge for people to choose revolution. Uh, a few years ago, Bob Avakian said, look, we have two choices. We either live with this and condemn future generations to the same or worse if they have a future at all, or we make revolution. And that challenge we're putting to people and saying, look, step into this, choose revolution. And that's some of what you heard of the of people saying, yes, I choose revolution. When people choose revolution, then they're stepping into a process that's about changing the whole world. And it's possible and it's necessary. And we want to play for you a clip from Baba Vakian directly about what this revolution is aiming for. What kind of world are we talking about making a reality? And when you're watching this clip, I want you to think about what difference it would make if this voice, if this message were reaching people throughout all of society, if it were reaching people who think that this is just what you have to put up with, who think that the best you can do is join a, a, a nonprofit and put 
put band-aids on the horror or 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 um um you know do charity work or just feed the homeless what difference would it make if people raise their sights not to band-aids and dead-end reforms reforms but if people raise their sights to the actual whole different world that is possible so let's hear from bob avakian directly this is from a talk from 2003 revolution why it's necessary why it's possible what it's all about and while you're watching think about what you would contribute to see this world brought into being for real let's talk about work imagine first of all that you actually wanted to go to work <laughs> Imagine instead of being treated like basically like an animal, being bossed around, treated as if you, you know, all you were there for was to bend your back, but you had no idea about how things ought to be, that you couldn't contribute anything, that you had no ideas that were worth anything, that you were just always trying to get out of everything and get do as little as you could, which of course you are under the capitalist system. <laughs> but imagine if the conditions were changed so that that weren't what you were doing. Imagine if you wanted to contribute. Imagine if your opinion were actually valued. Imagine if the character of work changed. Imagine if you knew when you produced something that it was for the good of the people, that it was helping the people's health needs or their needs for housing or their needs for textbooks for education that really told the truth. Imagine if besides that you were actually drawn into the administration of the place where you worked. If people like you chose representatives to be part of the committee running that place together with the people who more full-time administered and the managers. Imagine if the administrators and the manager actually came down and worked with you some hours during the week and talked with you and saw the situation from where you were. Imagine if you held discussions where you worked and larger discussions among representatives of people about what was all this work for? What are we producing this for? How is this going to help the people in society? How can we support the struggle of the people throughout the world better through what we're producing through our work? Imagine if that were what work is like. Imagine housing. What if the housing, instead of belonging more to the rats than to the people, were actually decent housing fit for human beings? Imagine if everybody had a decent place to live in more than that. Imagine if it weren't just everybody in their own little place trying to keep as much away from everybody else as they can and you had to have six locks on your door so that all your shit didn't get stolen. Imagine if you actually had neighborhoods and communities that were being beautified, where flowers are being planted and playgrounds, not glass-infested, broken-down shit, but actual playgrounds for people, for children, for others. Imagine if people were encouraged to hang out together, to talk with each other, to form committees to actually talk about, okay, what are we doing in this neighborhood, and how does it relate to the society and the world as a whole, and how does this neighborhood relate to the way people work, and how can we help each other out? And how many meals do we want to, want, want to all eat together? And how much do we want to allow for people to go and have their own meals in their own houses with their own families? How, how are we going to work all that kind of stuff out? Imagine if these are the kind of questions were being taken up in your neighborhood as well as in your work. And let's talk about work and housing together. Look at all these neighborhoods which under the rule of the capitalist system have been allowed and even encouraged to rot. Look at the youth and others just hanging out on the street corner with nothing to do or no way to do anything that doesn't get them into one kind of trouble or another. Imagine changing all that because now we have the power of society and we go to these youth and we say, here, we're going to give you training. We're going to give you education. We're going to bring you materials. We're going to enable you to go to work to build some beautiful housing and playgrounds and neighborhoods here for yourself and others who live here. Imagine if we said to them, you can not just work, you can be part of planning all this. You can be part of figuring out what should be done for the benefit of the people to make the society better and to contribute to making a whole different and radically better world. Imagine if for these youth, they could have a way to not just to make a living building housing, hospitals, community centers, and parks, and other things people need. But at the same time, they could have the opportunity and the dignity of working together with people throughout society to build a whole better world.
There's absolutely no reason why these kind of things aren't possible, except that we live under this system which makes them impossible. Let's talk about education. Just like imagining people wanted to go to work, imagine kids who actually wanted to go to school. <laughs> imagine... <laughs> imagine if they weren't degraded and insulted all the time and, act, and treated as if they couldn't possibly learn anything or have any important ideas. Imagine if the educational system actually told them the truth and help them to understand about the world and history and nature and society. Imagine if it actually helped them to think critically, to challenge everything. Yes, the teachers, yes, the admin, and yes, even the party and its leaders. What if the educational system drew the kids in, along with the teachers and staff, and said, this is a whole new society, a new world. What are your ideas about how this could all be done better? Imagine if the education combined practical things with theory, so the things they were studying and learning, they would go out into society and talk to people who did those things. Or they invite people in, instead of casting the old people off like useless garbage, invite the old people in to talk about the horrors of the old society and their experience and what the new society means to them, and have them have an exchange with these kids in the schools. And have the kids learn practical knowledge as well as studying theory and learning science and grappling with philosophy. The same in science. Right now, science often scares people. It's intimidating. You're taught that you can't possibly understand these things, that it's all mysterious. It's not the scientist's fault. It's the kind of society, or at least not mainly, it's the kind of society we have and the way in which they want people to be divided into different classes, groups, and castes. So that some people use their minds and other people can only use their bodies or just waste away or die fighting in a war. Imagine if science were brought to everybody and made the exciting thing it is for everybody. Struggling to investigate and learn about the world and the way it works and all the different things, both here on earth and in the far, what the religious people call the heavens. Imagine if here in the realm also of science, the scientists got together with the quote-unquote ordinary people, with the students in the school, with the workers in workplaces, and talked to them about science, drew them into scientific experiments and investigation, got their ideas, found out the questions they wanted to know about the world, and then worked up ways of people uniting together and cooperating to develop experiments and investigation in science that pursued these things. Imagine if science, like education and all these other parts of society, actually were serving to transform the society, to get rid of oppression, exploitation, inequality, and to help the people throughout the world wage the revolutionary struggle to do the same. Imagine if we had a whole different art and culture. Come on, enough of this bitches and hoes and SWAT teams kicking down doors. <laughs> enough of this get low bullshit. And how come it's always the women that have to get low? We already, we already have a situation where the masses of women and the white masses of people are pushed down and held down low enough already. It's time for us to get up and get on up. Imagine if we had a society where there were a culture that, yes, was lively and full of creativity and energy and, yes, rhythm and excitement, but at the same time, instead of degrading people, lifted us up. Imagine if it gave us a vision and the reality of what it means to make a whole different society and a whole different kind of world. Imagine if it laid out the problems for people in making this kind of world and challenged them to take up these problems. Imagine if art and culture too, movies, songs, television, everything, challenged people to think critically, to look at things differently, to see things in a different light, but all pointing toward how can we make a better world. Imagine if the people who created art and culture were not just a few handfuls of people, but all the masses of people with all their creative energy unleashed, and the time were made 
for them to do that and for them to join in with people who are more full-time workers and creators in the, in the realm of art and culture, to bring forward something new that would challenge people, would make them think in different ways, that would make them be able to see things critically and from a different angle, and would help them to be uplifted and help them to see their unity with each other and with people throughout the world in putting an end to all the horrors that we're taught are just the natural order of things. Imagine all that. This is not some kind of fantasy I'm talking about. This is what's been done in socialist societies. It's what's been done in the Soviet Union, even more so in China in the time when our class, the proletariat, held power. This is what's been done in these spheres and every other part of society. Yes, we're going to have laws and a constitution in socialist society to protect the people, to protect their interests, and to protect their rights. But more than that, we're going to rely on the people. We're going to bring forward the people. We're going to enable them to wrangle with things and to thrash things out themselves collectively. We're going to lead them to, ch to challenge everything, to transform everything, to bring into being this whole new world and to do it together with the people of the world. And what I'm what I'm talking about, again, is not a fantasy. These are the things that have been done in the socialist societies that have existed, or they're the things that on the basis of that experience we have summed up and are learning more deeply need to be done. This is all possible. It's not some pipe dream. This is what happens when the mass of people rise up and take control over society, and this is what waits to be done. That's right. So, look, I want to start, uh, before I comment on that, uh, I want to start by saying that we met our $1,000 challenge, and the last donor who gave 200 said, I choose revolution. So, yes, so let's, you know, let's keep going. Um, this is very important, very significant. This is objectively what you're giving to is the description that we just heard uh, Baba Vakian talk about, you know. This is the world that we're talking about getting to, you know, and People in this society can't even begin to imagine something like that, you know, and it's, you know, such a inspiring and such a tremendous thing, you know, that we do have, you know, somebody like Baba Bacon, who both has that, that hatred for what people are actually, you know, subjected to on a daily basis, even something, you know, that is, is actually very striking of like those people at the bottom of society that, you know, as, as he's speaking to, you know, that are locked out of, you know, contributing to society, you know, that all they do is work with their backs, you know, and, and, and are, and are again, locked out of even understanding, you know, um, how something like producing something that the needs of people actually works, you know, how that would work or what that would look like, you know, and all, everything that he walked through in that clip, I feel like it's, it's so different <laughs> and it's actually what, what we're talking about making a reality, you know, and to be able to, to, to do something like that, we, we need to, you know, we, one, need people to know that we have such a leadership, you know, that has brought forward this understanding, that has brought forward a strategy for how we can actually, what the work we need to be doing now, and how we can actually have a real chance to win once the time comes when we can go up against, you know, the system and really have a chance to defeat it, you know. Um, but then also, like, how we would build such a society, you know, where it isn't just like, okay, now everybody does whatever they want, but like an organized economy, an organized society, you know, like, the, it's, it's so, you know, I'm getting into some of this myself. And the more I learn about it, the more excited I get about like, wow, this is, a, you know, the, the kind of understanding that we're capable of ourselves, you know, grasp, but then also like, we're going to be leading that society, you know, we're going to be, this is our responsibility to actually like bring this into being and, and to organize that kind of society in a different, in a, in a, you know, once we get rid of the system, you know, and this is what your funds are going to, you know, this is why it matters so much, you know, that we're not just talking about, you know, as important and as hard and as, you know, a lot of people that have so much heart and a lot of hatred for what is happening to the masses of people that unfortunately are just, you know, stuck in just trying to feed people or just trying to, you know, do it's like, um, like sweeping water in, you know, in, into the ocean, you know, like that, that's how I picture it, you know, because it is like, you're going, you're talking about going up against such a, 
like, you know, such a huge thing, you know, and again, to have such a leadership that is able to, you know, lead through, you know, those contradictions, those obstacles, it's such a, it's a tremendous, and I, I don't know how, how else I can word, like, what a, what a big deal it is for people to, you know, one, know that this is possible, to be able to to see this clip, you know, or clips like these when we're taking it out into the neighborhood. You know, we have this truck um, that volunteers have, you know, worked on to be able to put a flat screen in the back of that we can actually roll up to the different neighborhoods and play these clips for people. That's a, a big deal, you know, and we want to be able to scale that up and have a TV that can be seen in the in the daytime, you know, so that people can engage this, the you know, this work so that people can actually, so we can continue to go to work on, again, this permanent, this idea that all of this is permanent and that there's nothing that people can do about it. You know, a, a big step of that is actually breaking through this, you know, the fact that not a lot of people know about this leadership, that not a lot of people know about this revolution, you know, and, and concretely what that looks like is your money, what you're giving today, what you're asking other people to donate to is to like, you know, let's make that truck into like, five trucks, you know, that can go to different neighborhoods, you know, that can, that we can get the technology to be able to show these clips on bigger screens, bigger sound systems, you know, what, what, as Annie said, going into this clip, you know, what difference would it make that people actually hear this, that people actually like get a chance to, you know, give some hope to people that there is a different way that the world can be. Yeah, and I, I want to, um, I think that's important, and I think this is what we're bringing people. This is what this National Revolution Tour is about. This is about bringing people hope on a scientific foundation, not hope, hypey, hope, soft, uh, uh, emotional, uh, religious nothings, mm -hmm. but an actual way the world to be radically different organized in a whole different way, the actual potential to overthrow this system. And I wanted to take a minute and just say a little more concretely what we mean by revolution. And the declaration and call says, by revolution, we mean nothing less than overthrowing this whole system, defeating, disarming, and dismantling the murderous armed power and other institutions that enforce this system, completely abolishing this whole system and replacing it with something radically different and much better, a new society built on an entirely different foundation. And um, if people want, if people are able to give contribute $50 or more, you can get a copy of the Constitution for the New Socialist Republic in North America that breaks down what that society would be, how it be, would be organized on a radically different foundation. But if you just think about what we're talking about here, this is completely out of the, up of the, the daily thinking of the vast majority of society, and this system works over time to keep it that way, mm -hmm. to have people thinking on the terms of the system, Think about how much, I want to say this, and then I, I want to read another statement that we got in with a matching challenge. Just think about this. How much funds have gone into the, the Steve Bannons of the world and the, and the Mercers to back and to fund these fascist movements? How much of the Koch brothers given to, to all of these fascist organizations to build up infrastructure, to build up media? This is insanity, and it's fascist insanity that's backed and unleashed by a section of the rulers under this system. What difference would it make if the forces for revolution were funded? And we're not going to be funded by the, by, the, by the ruling powers of this system. We're going to be funded by the people. What difference would it make if we were supported in, in, in any kind of close the way that these fascist forces are supported? Because they are fighting very hard for their future, and they have the infrastructure, and they have the backing for that. We actually have to have the infrastructure and the backing to bring into being a whole different world that's actually in the interest of the vast majority of humanity and the planet. So that's going to require funds and it's going to require a radically different kind of organization and it's going to require radically different kinds of backing, which is funds and support from people like you from you watching, from your friends, from your neighbors, from your support networks, from your family, from the people on the street who actually hate the way the world is and have never thought about the potential for a real revolution. Um, so I want to read a couple more statements um, from people who are giving, why they're giving. We met that $1,000 challenge. We have raised so far $6,055 of our $25,000 goal. And now we're going to bring in a, another statement from a collective group donation that uh, came together to give $1,500 and they have a call to match it. 
And here's their statement. They said, a group of us have come together to make a matching pledge to the Get Organized for an actual revolution tour. Rather than making an individual contribution, as some of us have done in the past, we want to make a group pledge together so that together we make this pledge in the name of the 1,300 prisoners who rose up 50 years ago on September 9th, 1971 in Attica, New York, in the Attica Rebellion, and especially the 29 brothers who were brutally murdered a week later when New York State Police carried out a bloody massacre against the mostly unarmed prisoners to retake the prison. And we want to challenge others to match our collective contribution. The rebellion against the horrific conditions that the prisoners were forced to live in, the daily brutality of prison life and of the guards overcame tremendous obstacles. Black, brown, and white prisoners, many of whom had been pitted against each other for years, overcame deep-seated mistrust to forge unity in this moment. The prisoners rose up not simply for themselves or in an act of getting personal revenge, as L.D. Barclay, one of the leaders of the rebellion, who was just 21 years old at the time, he announced to the amassed prisoners, the media, and the world at large, and said, we are men. We are not beasts, and we do not intend to be beaten or driven as such. At a time when the possibilities for an actual revolution are coming more sharply into focus, this tour is not just inspiring, it is necessary, and it requires and deserves our deepest support. So in the name of the brothers of the Attica Uprising, we're making a matching pledge of $1,500 to, to the fund drive and encourage others to join in. So I think on the coming up on the 50 year anniversary of the Attica Rebellion, that's a very inspiring and an important call for people to, to you know, a, a contribution and a call for people to match that contribution. So I wanna thank the donors who wrote that, who are giving these funds and call on everybody watching to match those, those contributions, to match that contribution. And there's two other statements I want to read. Um, one is from a, a black man in Houston who donated $50. And he said, I give to the revolution because it's the least I can do. While many have given blood, sweat, and tears, be the change the world needs, not work for profit. Be the prophet of universal unity, and we can all be free. And this is from a Chicago activist for racial justice. And they said, I am donating because I believe that liberty for those who've been historically marginalized can only prevail if they're part of a new revolution that resists fascism and pushes back on white negative social norms. Um, so I think those are very, you know, you give, get a sense of some of the breadth of people who are contributing. I think those are inspiring uh, statements from people who are giving funds. Um, and I hope that, that inspires you to match those funds and more. Um, you know, you can, again, we have these premiums that are available, the books from Bob Avakian, you got to see him, talk some about the kind of world that's possible. That was a talk from 2003. There's a tremendous amount of work that he's written since then. We have the Constitution, we have basics, uh, Bob Avakian's memoir, From Ike to Mao and Beyond, uh, this book, The New Communism. And again, this is like a storehouse of knowledge for how to understand the world that we're actually living in. Where do these horrors come from? Why is it that this system is not reformable and needs to be, but also can be overthrown? And then what is it about this rare moment we're in where revolution could actually be possible? And if you think about the amount of sacrifice that went on just 50 years ago in the Attica Rebellion, all of that sacrifice, the people whose lives were lost in a righteous uprising, but now what difference would it make if that uprising could go all the way? Well, that's going to require your funds. It's going to require people, yes, but it's going to take a lot of funds to reach the people who need to know about and need to step into and be organized into this revolution. So contribute, contribute generously. Um, and then the other premiums we have, you saw the prints from this artist who's a member of the Revolution Club, who um, you can get these five by seven size prints, uh, the abstract ones, the beautiful uh, portrait of George Floyd. And then if you give $200 or more, you can get a custom made portrait. Um, and uh, I, I, I think it's quite a beautiful thing. And maybe there's someone you know who you wanna send them a, 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 a self portrait. Maybe there's somebody else that you'd want a, a digital portrait of. Um, and they're offering uh, to do that for a donation to the National Revolution Tour. They're offering their time and their creativity if you can contribute your funds. And then there's those beautiful crochet flowers, the individual ones and the baskets. So contribute, call on others to contribute. And we're gonna put those um, 
photos of all that on our social media so people can see that, so people can spread it. It's not just available during this live stream, although, although it really matters during this live stream. Uh, but it will be, some of those premiums will be available in an ongoing way. Um, okay, so now we want to go to our next segment, which is on a recent piece from Bob Avakian um, titled The Weapons of Oppression and the Heart to Fight to End Oppression. And just this week, a group of Revcoms in Chicago, they wrote a statement from people who lost loved ones to violence among the people in the streets, calling on people to donate to the National Revolution Tour. And I had the opportunity to speak with Roosevelt. He was one of the signers of this powerful statement, which you can also read on Revcom. Um, and he read the statement and also followed it up with a brief interview. So we want to play three things, three videos all in a row. The first is uh, we're going to play the four minute video of Bob Avakian reading his recent piece, Weapons of Oppression and the Heart to Fight to End Oppression. Then we're going to go into the video of Roosevelt reading their statement from people who lost, lost loved ones to the violence, to the madness of, of murder among the people in the streets. And then, and then he'll answer some questions about why he was part of that and why you should contribute. So this is about a 12 minute series of videos. Um, stay tuned, tell other people to tune in. I think this is very powerful, inspiring and important. Weapons of oppression and the heart to fight to end oppression. This system has two big weapons. It uses to maintain masses of people in a situation where they are oppressed brutalized, degraded, and demoralized. The first weapon is the murderous armed force of this system, which, along with all its other atrocities, continually hunts down and kills black, brown, and Native American people in the most depraved ways. The second weapon is the way this system messes people up and gets them thinking and acting in messed up ways. And especially how this system denies the youth a decent future, forcibly confines so many in miserable conditions, and gets them caught up in fighting and killing each other. This Two is a monstrous crime of this system. What kind of system condemns so many youth to nothing better than this? What kind of system does so many people this way and then seizes on what it has got people caught up in, uses this as an excuse? to treat masses of people as less than human, murder them in the thousands, and lock them up in the millions right in this country, while it slaughters people all around the world and destroys the earth. It is this monstrous system of capitalism imperialism that we are now forced to live under, a system that could not survive without viciously exploiting billions of people worldwide, including more than 150 million children, a system that never will and never can stop doing all this. But it doesn't have to be this way. We Revcoms are out to change all this, the only way it can be done, through an actual revolution to do away with this whole system. We have the science, the strategy and plan, and the leadership to do this, and we are actively working and waging the necessary struggle to bring forth and organize a revolutionary force of thousands and then millions 
from many different parts of society, and especially youth whose anger, frustration, and desperation to make a mark in this world and be respected needs to be and can be transformed into determination to put an end to this system and to bring a radically different and much better world into being, to become emancipators of humanity. In a declaration, a call to get organized now for a real revolution, we have made it clear. This not only cries out to be done, it is possible, and everyone who has a heart to fight for something really worth fighting for needs to get with this revolution we are working for now. From people who lost loved ones to violence on the streets. We call on everyone who wants to end this madness to donate to the revolution tour. We have felt the pain of having lost loved ones to the violence on the streets. We live with this weight of this loss every day. We are filled with anguish every time we hear news of someone else gunned down due to this insanity. But unlike so many who blame the youth for what they are caught up in and the despair that this can never change, we know that it doesn't have to be this way. We know the truth of what Baba Vicky and B.A. says, that one of the monstrous crimes of this system is the way this system messes people up and gets them thinking and acting in messed up ways, and especially how this system denies the youth a decent future forcibly confines so many in miserable condition and gets them caught up in fighting and killing each other. BA has forged a way out of this madness through revolution. And there are people actively working now to make that real on a national revolution tour at the heart of a strategy to bring forth and organize a revolutionary force of thousands and then millions from many different parts of society, and especially youth, whose anger, frustration, and desperation to make a mark in this world and be respected needs to be and can be transformed into determination to put an end to this system and to bring a radically different and much better world into being, to become emancipators of humanity. We call on everyone who wants to end this madness to donate to this tour. Signed, Hank Brown, Roosevelt Burrell, Gloria Pinax, John Packett, and I'm certain that many more wish they could have signed or would sign. P.S. You can listen to B.A. read this entire piece, Weapons of Oppression and the Hard to Fight to End Oppression, at the Revcom.us. My name to the list because as a member of the Revolution Club in Chicago that I lost so many people uh, due to the violence that's, that's being waged across the city due to this system. And I have to go to a memorial Saturday for my nephew, Lonzo, who was a member of the Revolution Club as well. I have to go to his memorial Saturday and I just lost numerous other people uh, from this violence. And a lot of people don't understand how, when B.A. said uh, it, this system messes people up, you know, especially those in uh, the, the youth, you know, because this system, you know, it's time after time, it goes at the youth and it shows the youth how they really have no plans for them and have no respect for them and have no desire for them. It just hit me that when this call came forward, it hit me that uh, that BA also in this in this new piece that uh, it should be paid attention to, you know, weapons of oppression 
and the hard to fight to end oppression. You know, this really needs to be dug into to bring light to what's really going on and who their you know, true enemies really are. This system is the corporate, you know, and the only way to deal with this system is to join up with the club to get to the thousands, to get to the millions, where we could one day have a real revolution and change this and change this entire system from the bottom all the way up. You know, this is the urgency that need to be uh, recognized and dealt with. The thing about raising, uh, giving funds, donating to to this cause, you know, is looking at what the what the National Revolution Two is doing. There's nobody out there that's doing as much uh, a truthfulness, you know, about what's going on, you know, in society as the this this group of people that that come from various back background is doing right now today. You know, shoes are being worn out, you know, because they're hitting the pavement hard. So shoes are being worn out. Again, uh, uh, the material that they're using, you know, this is not just coming from the air. You know, uh, this is coming from some people who, 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 who has a, a drive to support the National Revolution Tour. And we need more people out there, you know, to do the same, to support the tour, to donate generously, you know, to put forth this message, to bring forth this message you know, on what's really going on in society and what's really needed. It's, 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 it's funny how, how far, you know, a pamphlet, you know, this material can go. This material can go a long way. You know, a rim of paper can cost anywhere from three to six, six dollars and more. In some places it costs 10. But, you know, you got paper, you got you know, food, you got the most thing. I mean, I think food is one of the most, one of the best things that you can have uh, doing these tour food and water. And a lot of people doing these tours seriously, you know, aren't eating as, as, as well as they should, but they're doing it for the love of humanity. You know, I mean, in all seriousness, this should be paid attention to. Let's keep in mind as well that there are those that's, that's, that's on a tour, you know, who, who's, who's fighting out there every day or fighting the best way that they can, you know, sacrificing their health, you know, to do this, to bring forth a better future. So I applaud them all. Thank you. Thank you, Roosevelt. Uh, that was very, very, Beautiful, great reading, very powerful reading, and a very moving interview. And um, so, you know, I want to I want to announce that we met our fifteen hundred uh, matching donation. You know, uh, that's very important. Um, and we have an update from uh, the food sales that's happening in South Central. Um, they have raised two hundred and seventeen dollars from the. $10 plates. They're selling plates for $10. And they're reporting that people are coming out. Uh, probably about 15 people in total came out buying multiple plates. People that have seen the revolution out, you know, in the neighborhood. People that heard it from their neighbors and are coming, you know, and are watching us in, in this live stream and, and watch the the last segment of Baba Vakian. Um, and and one person commented and said, what church is he from? <laughs> and this person, um, and then he asked, this person doesn't believe in God? Whoa. You know, and and this, you know, opened up a whole conversation. And, and this person said, well, I believe in God and I can appreciate this. <laughs> you know, so that's, you know, that's the kind, gives people a feel of the kinds of people that are being brought together around this revolution, you know, that, um, have a heart for what is happening to people and hear what Avakian, you know, is, is putting forward and, you know, have, have their responses to that, you know, but it really matters, you know, that people, whether they disagree with what Bob Avakian is saying or whether they agree and can appreciate from whatever perspective they're coming from to actually engage this leadership, you know? And so 
another shout out to you know people out in south central selling the 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 food plates and uh raising funds and watching this live stream um together um so keep you know keep sending in your donations we're at 10,078 out of the 25,000 so keep keep those donations coming I also did, I didn't announce this earlier, but I did also want to say it's a perfect segue. One of the premiums um, that, that people can also get if you give $50 or more is you can get a copy of Bob Avakian's seminal work, Away With All Gods, Unchaining the Mind and Radically Changing the World. So if you're still watching from South Central and said, whoa, he doesn't believe in God, you can dig into this book to understand not just why, but why the struggle around science and the, the struggle for science and the struggle against all outmoded uh, 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 mystical religious worldviews is part of the struggle to make an actual revolution, to bring into being a whole new world. You'll dig into what's the harm that religion has done, but also why from a militantly communist understanding, thoroughly scientific understanding, Bob Avakian argues that we have to come together with broadness of mind and generosity of spirit, including people who are, who are driven to do positive things because of their religion, but also open to the struggle about why science above all else is what's needed to unchain the mind and radically change the world. So if you give $50 or more, you can get a copy of Away With All Gods. Um, this is a really important and a really inspiring book. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's very important. One of the things um, that I want to go to this clip first because I, I feel like this is really, really fitting, you know, this clip from, um, you know, you're going to hear Noche from the June 12th, uh, you know, uh, marches is one of the things that we go out into society with is not just here's an information, here's a pamphlet with information, but we struggle with the ways that people, you know, think, you know, and then, and you know, in religion and a lot of these uh, ways of thinking that keep people with this idea that nothing can be changed, you know, or this is just the, the way that things are, or that in some afterlife, we're going to be able to get to, you know, looking forward to that instead of like, in this real world, we can actually change all this, you know, and, and, but one of the things that's, you know, very important to have, you know, going out in this kind of way where we are challenging the ways that people think, you know, and, and I want to go to this clip uh, from Noche, because it's, you know, it does show people, you know, challenging people in a way that's not like putting people down because they're they're caught up in thinking this way but that is very inviting and that actually does challenge people in a way to both see the the silliness and some of the ways that they're caught up thinking but also the that there is actually a way to understand the world and and to actually go to work and, and transforming it so let's go to that to that clip of noche that the police and the sheriffs came from slave patrols and that's true and it's good people are starting to talk about that but i got to say if you follow the logic it seems kind of silly that you would talk about defunding and abolishing slave patrols without talking about how you're gonna abolish slavery <laughs> It seemed kind of silly to talk about dismantling one part of this system without talking about getting rid of the whole system. The old form of chattel slavery in this country didn't end because the slave patrols couldn't get funding anymore. It took a civil war, an all out fight. It was bloody. It happens to be the only war this country is ashamed of having fought because it ended slavery. The point is, sisters and brothers, it's not enough to let people point out partial truths. We have to follow the truth wherever it takes us. That's what Bob Avakian does. We follow Bob Avakian. Bob Avakian follows the truth wherever it takes you. Doesn't turn away from it. And when if you say that they have an analog to the slave patrols, then the logical conclusion is that we cannot be playing around with half-stepping reforms while that keep this system in place and going. We have to make a revolution.
So uh, I think that's a, you were right. That's a very good example of, of Noche struggling with people in a way that's in, that's, that's real. Um, and you can also see some of the people on the National Revolution Tour um, in, the, in the clip that followed, some of who you're supporting on this tour, who's on the ground, who are out at uh, reaching the youth at mini bike races, in the skate parks, in the punk scenes, uh, really spreading this message. And you can also see what it changes with your, when you're able to turn heads and get people to turn their turn their heads, turn their sights, turn their thinking to an actual revolution. Um, we want to encourage people to really learn from these examples of the collective revolutionary of the revolutionary change jars. To learn from the example of this uh, of this plate food selling, the food sale that's happening in South Central Los Angeles of what it can change when people come together to support, to raise funds, to contribute funds to the revolution. Again, this is one of the things we really want people to, to understand is raising funds for the revolution is building organization for the revolution and it's spreading the word about revolution. And it's an essential part of what's required to actually be able to contend on a national level, to project, to inspire that, 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 that there really is a whole other way the world could be. Um, okay, a couple more statements. We are at, um, we've raised over $10,000. The thermometer went away. I think it'll come back in a second. Um, but uh, the the match the, of the $1,500 the, the $1, match that we made that you announced a minute ago, that includes the South Central food plates. It includes uh, uh, contributions and, and collections from Houston. Um, what's up, Houston? Uh, and it includes a number of other individual uh, donations. I want to read a statement that came in from a librarian here in Los Angeles. And they said, I donate, oh, I think it's actually, I don't know where this librarian is from, but from a librarian. They said, I donate and participate in the revolution because I believe the active participants have a positive outlook. It is an innovative, strong group of people working toward a mutual goal for the betterment of mankind. And that's true and that's appreciated and it matters. And there's one other statement that came in while we were here um, and it's a pledge from someone to give $500 a month for the next three months. And so that's, a, that's an important contribution. It's an example of the kind of sustaining that needs to go on. And they said, the beauty of humanity and all living things stands in stark contrast to the life we're in caused by capitalism. It's gonna take a grasp of reality, the whys and the wherefores that only a communist analysis can deliver. Support and strengthen this revolutionary theory and program as if our lives depend on it because they do. I will donate $500 a month for the next three months. So you're right and we thank you for your contribution and let's learn from all of this and reach out to many others. We are at $11,131 toward our $25,000 goal, goal and we've got a lot more to share with you here today. So stay tuned with us, invite others to tune in, spread the word on, on DM. If you haven't texted all of the people you know, all the people in your phone, all the people you've talked to, your cousin uh, that you haven't, you haven't spoken with in a year, your uh, high, kid, people you knew in high school, uh, reach out to all of those folks and say, you know what? Tune in right now. There's something you need to hear. The National Revolution Tour, um, Michelle. Yeah. And, you know, this is, it's all part of a national movement. You know, this is like a very important 
you know, some the statements you're hearing, you know, the 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 kinds of things that we're that we're bringing to life here of the the people that are being brought together that are being organized is not just in Los Angeles, even as the National Revolution Tour is here on the ground in Los Angeles, but we're leading a national uh, a movement for revolution, you know, and people, you know, who you'll will be showing some videos of people from other from other cities, you know, and why they're donating. But what I want to I wanted to share here is. Um, from the Revolution Club in Chicago, you know, uh, we just heard yesterday from the Revolution Club in Chicago about some of what they are doing there, and we wanted to share this. And I want to read a statement from them um, and show some images, you know, of of this communique that they wrote. And you're gonna hear, you know, why don't I just read this? Um, so they say in Chicago, the daily press accounts of shootings and killings are very similar to the daily body count during the Vietnam War or coverage from uh, Mexico when the women were disappearing in Juarez. The shootings at her doorstep have stepped up. On Monday, a man who hangs around outside the Revolution Club's organizing center got into a, a verbal altercation with a young man who came back and shot him six times, killing him in the parking lot of the grocery store a few blocks east of our center. Then on Wednesday evening, three people were shot simply walking on the street. They all survived a couple blocks east of where a young woman was killed and five others shot a few weeks ago. There were also two mass shootings in other areas on Wednesday. We made up a communique using an excerpt from Baba Vakian's recent article on the weapons of oppression and the heart to fight to end oppression, which we just watched the video of, right? And we also made a poster of the fun drive call from people here who lost, their, who lost loved ones in, in the violence. And on Thursday, we went out postering along the streets where these shootings happen and put this communique up and the beautiful fun drive poster and a poster we made of the call to donate. Um, we're also playing BA and reading the weapons of oppression and the hard to fight to end oppression piece over a sound system outside of our center. And on Friday, we joined about 120 people at a peace march, bringing people the message and challenge of revolution, nothing less. So look, this is, again, a something that a lot of people are agonizing over, you know, and we're not ignoring this and we're actually going out to transform all of that. And this is actually what your funds are going to, you know, no, we're not going to ignore it. No, we're not going to pretend like it doesn't exist. These are real contradictions that, you know, the system actually like puts people in these conditions and there is a way to, un to understand this. And I really want to encourage people. There's actually a, uh, a YouTube um, video of Baba Vakian getting into this, you know, that um, I don't remember the exact <laughs> where exactly it is, but it's on youtube.com uh, slash tune into Revcom and it digs into it's a it's a discussion of Baba Vakian having a discussion with people from Chicago mm -hmm. about this contradiction and really wrangling together with how we're going to break through. And I also encourage people to get into the clip on the on the consent decree. I also, you know, it's if you search that on YouTube, you'll find it. But there's a way to understand yeah. why this is happening. And it's a horror. Mm -hmm. But it really doesn't have to keep happening again and again and again, summer after summer after summer. We can change all of this. There is a future for these youth in the revolution to bring a whole new world into being. But under this system, there is no future. So contribute funds for the, for the future of these youth. So we could, it's, it's such a waste of life, of potential. It's the suffocation of a whole generation and generations after generations of people. And it can be put a stop to but only through the forces to build up an actual revolution because there's no way under this system that, that you're going to that you're going to change this that you're going to actually put an end to this except for the movement for revolution to bring that whole new world into being yeah that's yeah that's very concretely what your funds are going to you know what you saw there of you know the the images the the posters the communiques that are going up in different neighborhoods you know that is challenging people that are caught up in this you know and also others to see that this doesn't have to be this way you know so that's very important and i do you know want to encourage people to continue giving and also if you can think of you know other people that you've had this co these conversations with you know that may be agonizing over this send this video to them you know send this live stream to them now have them tune in have them you know donate to this because you know that there's a lot of good-hearted people out there that are saying stop the violence but as Baba Vakian says stop the violence and then what 
You know, where is this actually going to go to? You know, we actually need to put an end to this system and bring about a whole different society where these youth can actually have a future. You know, um, so including the fund, the revolution tour that's going out to struggle with people to break out of revenge, mm -hmm. to break out of thinking on the terms of this system. That's the, the National Revolution Tour has volunteers that are reaching out throughout all of society and anchoring a national movement to struggle with people to stop fighting and killing each other. That's right. what your funds are going to support, to, to support the volunteers on the Revolution Tour, to support the materials that are going out and reaching people. Um, that's what your funds are going to. Uh, so there, you yeah. heard me. You didn't see me, but you heard me. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. This is um, all live. This is a live, <laughs> live stream. So we're live and in effect. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think this is a really good, um, you know, right before we move to our next uh, segment, which is going to be on the RNO show. And that's actually, you know, we have, you know, this is why people need to give, you know, we have these, you know, people behind the cameras that are doing all this work and are multitasking, you know, it's, it's very important that we have them here and people got to contribute to that. But before we go to this, to the segment on the RNL show, which is our next segment, um, I actually want to go to this, this, um, another clip from June 12 and um, Noche's speech and continuing and talk about this weapons of oppression piece, you know, and, and, and actually challenging people, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to do what, what he does in, in that clip, but let's just, let's just go to that clip and then we'll come back and talk more. And keep giving. Before we watch this, I just want to say keep giving. Yeah. Keep contributing. We're at $11,131 of our $25,000 goal. Keep contributing. Call people you know. Have them tune in. This, on this Noche speech that you're about to hear, there's nobody saying what Noche Diaz is saying. This is somebody who's coming forward to lead people, to step into the revolution, to lead people, to become followers of BA. Text somebody, DM them, post this on social media, tell people to tune in, tell people to contribute. Let's go to the video now. The sisters and brothers, Baba Vicky has pointed out, there are two big weapons that they use to keep people down and keep people oppressed. They have all their violence, their murder, their prisons, but they also have the way they catch people up thinking just like this system. Living and dying for nothing but self, just like a capitalist except you ain't got no capital. They have people in these streets fighting for markets on different corners, except it's illegal, their markets, and they don't go all around the world using millions of people, they just fight and kill each other on corners, and that suits this system just fine so long as people are living and dying that way. So if we're gonna make this revolution, we gotta break down both of these weapons of this system's oppression. We're gonna have to break people out of the ways of thinking that keep them going along with all this. Keep them from getting into this revolution. Keep them thinking there's no hope in going up against this powerful enemy. And then we're gonna have to prepare people, as this declaration talks about, for the time when we can go all out and actually defeat and dismantle this system's institutions of violence. Because anything else will completely fail to deal with the problem. The fact is, tens of millions of people, for a revolution to come about, have to understand these police, sheriffs, and the US military have no right to use any violence whatsoever. They shouldn't even be allowed to direct traffic. They have no right to exist. They have no legitimate reason for being on this earth. And when tens of millions of people understand that, we're going to have to be organized to be able to do something about their ability to carry it out and defeat their capacity and dismantle their institutions so that we can sweep aside their system. And that is what we are getting ready for. And the times that we live in today are the kinds of times where such a fight can be won. It's not all the time that you get a shot at bringing down a powerful opponent. And when that opening comes along, once in a lifetime, maybe, uh, not only can we do something that really matters, our lives can finally count for the greatest thing. Imagine, a hundred years from now, in the history books, when the children are learning about this old, wicked land that was once called America. When people are learning about what sheriffs and police like this did all over this country. And they talk 
about the people who took history into their hands, rose up after too long of this and said no more and brought that system down. Imagine how much our lives will have meaning for those future generations. This is why we have to continue from here forward. What we did today was beautiful and powerful and it's a launching pad to go even further. And we're gonna have to keep on struggling with people because we know their potential. This is why Bob Avakian has never stopped struggling with people. He sees their potential, not just to fight, but to be emancipators of humanity. That's why we follow Bob Avakian and everyone who wants to see an end to all oppression needs to follow Bob Avakian too. Not to get more likes on Facebook or Twitter, not to cultivate our brand, but because we want to get free and Bob Avakian has developed a way out of this. And if anybody out there tells you, oh yeah, that sounds all nice, but, but he's an old white man. Come on. You're down with getting free, you're down with ending all oppression. But you want to give up just because you ain't got it in you to follow a white man. What are you really about? Again, the problem ain't that Bob Avakian is a white man. The problem is that you are caught up in this way of thinking that has nothing to do with getting free. Well, that was Noche Diaz from the June 12th uh, March in South Central Los Angeles. And it was uh, to show the world that there's a force getting organized now for revolution, nothing less. Uh, Noche said powerfully in that is not very often that a time comes along where you can where you can take down a powerful enemy. And now is one of those times. Um, you know, what we were doing with that June 12th March is described in the declaration and call. It talks about we need to wield this growing revolutionary force to stand up to the system and its murderous enforcers and to change the whole terrain, the political, the social, the cultural situation and atmosphere throughout society to weaken the hold of this system over people, win them away from acting to, acting to strengthen and enforce this system and create the best possible conditions for this revolution to succeed. So to impact the terrain in that kind of way, it needs funds. It needs your financial support, so contribute. We are at $11,131. Um, we're gonna be, shortly we're gonna be bringing you some more statements, uh, video statements from people who are giving to the revolution. You can hear more from others. Um, but before we do that, I wanna bring on Atlas Winfrey, who is one of the editors of the national, of the, uh, sorry, of the RNL, the Revolution Nothing Less show. Uh, you're one of the creative people behind the show. Uh, and you're also part of the national tour to get organized for revolution. And we are, I'm in your studio and we're excited to have you on our fundraising live stream. Yeah, I'm Welcome, happy to Atlas. be here. Thank you very much. Uh, so Atlas, we want you to talk with people here today some about, um, you know, we've said a lot about the mission of the national revolution tour, about the situation we're in. What are the need, what is the need that the RNL, the Revolution Nothing Less show is filling? How do you see that and why should people contribute to filling that need to the, to the role and the mission of the RNL show? Yeah, well, the RNL show plays a very important role in the grand scheme of things, in the grand th scheme of the actual revolution that we're setting out to make. You know, we just heard Noche talk about these two weapons of oppression that we have to break down. You know, the way that this system you know, degrades people, it oppresses people, it guns them down. And in today's times, people do not enough recognize those things as just that weapons of oppression. When we see headline after headline after headline of, you know, our people, you know, our youth shooting and killing each other, a lot of how people look at that is just as a tragedy, you know, something that is uh, unavoidable, something that we can't do without, you know, something that can't be ended. You know, something that comes from people's choices. They don't see the workings and the operation of a system underneath it that puts people in these conditions and forces them into a situation where, yes, it makes sense for them to be involved in all this gang stuff and killing each other and all this terrible stuff. You know, in order for there to be a revolution, there actually needs to be millions of people who come to see that the way people are degraded under the system, the way that they're oppressed, you know, the way that they're shot down by the police on the daily, the way that women are assaulted, degraded, abused, you know, the way that immigrants are treated as less than human, the way the planet is being destroyed, the way there are wars all over the world. They need to come to see the gears underneath an actual system that's driving that. 
And right now, that, a lot of how people see things is just that it's, you know, personal choices that people are making or that, you know, this is just our lot in life and that all we can hope for is to, you know, for some God or some heaven, some afterlife where we can actually finally be free of all of these things. And what the r &L show does every single week is it shines a light on all the outrages, all the things that people hate, that they, you know, that they need to understand are actually not necessary, that are actually not just the way things are, you know, and that's a very important part of bringing forward millions of people, you know, who are ready to put it all on the line for an actual revolution. Millions of people who are inspired with the vision of something else, an alternative. And the RNL show plays that really important and crucial role. You know, every time that you see a homeless person, you know, laying out on the street and people walking by, you know, and just accepting that this is how things are, you need to be thinking about the RNL show. You know, every time that people are told that when a woman is sexually assaulted and raped, that it's her fault. You need to be thinking RNL show. Every time this happens, you know, this is what people need to think about. They need to get this understanding. They need to get, yeah, that's, that's the role that this RNL show plays on the one hand. On the other hand, the RNL show plays an important role in organizing an actual national movement for revolution. How do you get people all over the country in many different kinds of places from a small town in the middle of Michigan, all the way to a big city like LA. How do you involve people in the revolution and connect them together? The single mothers, you know, the, the professionals who have very little time, who have a lot of professional demands. How do you tie all those people together? How do you give them a way to act together according to a common plan for a common objective and goal? Communism, ending this system, bringing it down and going to a society where there is no more exploitation and oppression. The RNL show plays a big role in that. How do you spread the revolution? How do you bring forward more people who can spread the revolution? The RNL show is a place where you get training to understand the world as it actually is. You know, one of the segments I had a, an opportunity to be a part of producing was a, was a documentary uh, all about how the environment, the way the environment is being destroyed, how it's actually connected to this system, how capitalism, imperialism, why it needs to destroy the environment and can't do away with it. You can see that right here on this YouTube channel. And also at the end of that, there's an interview with Raymond Lotta who gets into how in a socialist society would you do it different? Why is it that in a socialist society, you could actually start to go to work on the environment, how we could actually come together? What would that society be like? You know, those are the kinds of things that people get in the RNL show, and it's very important that it be supported, that people donate to co and contribute to make sure that it can actually reach millions of people. Yeah, I think that's really important. I mean, you think about how much media is out there, how much media people consume right now that just tells them what they already think or tells them, you know, just kind of a surface analysis that does not dig under underneath the hood of why things are happening and especially how they can change, mm -hmm. right? It's just a lot of uh, uh, repeating the, the the bromides, the ideas of, of uh, you know, human nature or it's people's personal choices or it's just that corrupt politician and doesn't actually expose the inner workings. And then, like you're saying, especially how it can change that it can change. Mm -hmm. Um, could you talk some about uh, the, the, you know, we've learned a lot about how to produce the RNL show. It's, it's a tremendous and very high level professional uh, uh, YouTube uh, show every week. It's a full hour on Thursdays at five o'clock, uh, our time, eight o'clock, New York time. But can you bring to life what it's like to create the show, but also the challenges and the, the very concrete needs that the show has? What difference it would make if you were funded on a whole different level? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the thing is, everybody who works on the RNL show is a part of this national revolution tour. And this revolution tour, you know, it's, it's people who are living together, eating together, you know, uh, playing music together, you know, sharing wheel and woe. And it's a very inspiring and uplifting thing. And one of the most important things that we do is we actually get into the science of communism. We actually dig into and follow very closely the work that Bob Avakian does. And this is something we're all doing together to try to work together to help understand it. And when we're talking about producing the RNL show, that is the most important part of what we're doing and what we're bringing to people. 
And so that's a, that is a very challenging thing because this, you know, it's, it can be difficult, but we have each other and we have our collectivity to, to, to do that. And I'd say like, it's a lot of work to try to understand, you know, the world. It's a lot of work, you know, to be able to present these things to people in an accessible way, in a way that somebody who's in high school, you know, someone who's in middle school could get, as well as something that a, someone who's a PhD, you know, or a doctor or a lawyer, something that they could get a lot out of too. And when we produce the show, that's who we're thinking of. We're thinking about all those people. and We're trying to actually produce something um, that could speak to millions and millions of people. And it's a lot of work it's, and it's very challenging. But the reality is, is that this show is very good. You know, we've produced 61 hours together, you know, that you can see on this channel. We've produced a number of live streams, documentaries, interviews with people from very different walks of life. And what we really need to do now is we need to take this RNL show to the next level. We need to actually be able to produce a show that's on the level that could contend with something like you'd see on HBO. You know, and in order to do that, we need lights. You know, we need more lights, high quality. You can't see the lights, but they're here. <laughs> you know, we need cameras. We need high quality cameras. We need sound equipment so we can go out on the streets and we can document the ways that people are actually working for revolution and that we can bring that to you. We need more powerful, more complicated computer equipment. Just to give you a sense, I mean, in order for us to produce this show, we need computers that cost a minimum of $3,000 because already what we're producing is at, is at a very high level. Mm -hmm. And for us to make this show speak to millions, we're going to have to actually raise hundreds of thousands of dollars to make this show what it needs to be. And the other thing is, is that in order to reach millions of people, we need to put thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars into actually building up promotional materials. You know, in L.A., you know, you see films, you know, all across Los Angeles, you see different radio shows that are being promoted with these giant film posters. You know, we need to have those kinds of giant film posters that are all over every corner in Los Angeles, every corner in Chicago, every wall in New York. And in order to do that, those things cost money. We need to be running video ads that are seen on places like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. And in order to do that, that costs funds. We need t-shirts, RNL show t-shirts so that you, you know, if you're someone like me or maybe you know somebody who's shy, doesn't like to go up and talk to everybody, you know, you need one of these RNL show t-shirts so that, uh, so that people come up to you and ask you, hey, what's that show all about? You know, in order to do those things, we need funds. I was going to show off my my R and L show face mask. Right. This here, we uh, we made some of these for June twelfth, so we had these face masks, and we want to actually be able to print these and distribute these to the youth at the mini bike races, to the youth at the skate parks, to the youth at the hip hop mm -hmm. concerts. Uh, people are starting to come out this summer, um, but anyways, you're, the t shirts, the face masks, all of this is what's needed. So um, thank you, Atlas. Is there anything else you want to want to add? Uh, just that you should watch the RNL show. You should spread the RNL show to everybody you know. It's one of the most important ways that you can spread the word about this revolution. Tune in every week, comment in the comment section, and donate. Donate so that this show, so that this revolution can get out everywhere. Thank you so much for, for joining us for this fundraising live stream. I think you really brought to life why people should contribute, the difference, the difference it would make for this show to be funded on a whole other level. And that's what your funds go to. That's why people should, should uh, tell their friends, ask their friends to donate um, and spread the word about the RNL show. Um, so I want to say, a, a, you know, we're going to, we're going to keep going. We have some more to get into for you uh, here today, for all of you watching and look, you know, um, you know, I, I also think in the coming weeks on the RNL show, people will be hearing more about this new piece from Bob Avakian. This is a rare time when revolution becomes possible, why that's so, and how to seize on this opportunity. So even in these next weeks, people should very seriously give to the RNL show so that in these next weeks, when they're, when they're bringing clarity to things like, how do we understand the, the, the fascist near coup that took place on January 6th? Where did these forces come from? What dangers do they portend? How do we understand the fact that abortion is hanging by a thread and the fascists are not stopping? How do we understand the, um, 
And the fact that they're very moving very determinedly to do away with the basic right to vote in this country. There's a lot of people giving a lot of answers to these things and you can learn from some of them. And a lot of them are just repeating lies that, oh, don't worry, Trump was just some insane lunatic. That won't happen again. Or people are believing a lot of the lies that, that uh, Biden is somehow gonna bring everybody together. If you wanna cut through the BS and understand things in the real, the actual dangers we're facing, but even more than that, the positive potential for an actual revolution, then you should contribute to the RNL show. You should tune into the RNL show and you should spread the word about it because they're going to be bringing a lot of clarity to these questions very urgently in these next weeks. So um, thank you, Atlas, for joining us. And uh, keep giving, keep tuning in, and spread the word about this live stream. And, and we've got a few more segments here for you here today. Um, so I want to move into this next, next discussion. Oh, actually, before I do that, I want to move to a couple short uh, video clips about from people who are giving and why you should give and a really inspiring video we got from someone in New York who did a creative thing where he um, uh, played his saxophone uh, in the uh, public transit system in New York City and raised funds and did it in a really creative way. So we're going to play that video. We're going to play a video also from New York um, about somebody from somebody on why they're giving. So watch those and then and then we'll be back with me and Michelle in just a minute. right out by um, by Port Authority, um, raising funds for the Revolution Club and for the future of this country. This is why we're, um, or rather not the future of this country per se, but the future of the people inside this country as we, as we create a new system that we can that we can be proud of, so to speak. One that is for all people, not just the people at the top, the, the people that the system was created for. That's why I was out there, you know, playing uh, the mangled Star Spangled Banner and what I decided to dub America the Ugly um, because we are raising funds for the Revolution Club, for supplies and everything, so we can continue doing what we're doing. And what we're doing is, again, for, is trying to create a new system for all people, again, not just for people that are, are in control, because this system was built upon upon slavery and, and white supremacy. And as we move forward into the system, we can't, we, as we move forward into the future, we can't allow the system to keep giving us little concessions as bread and circus, while people are dying and suffering and the, wor and the world is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. There's been fires in Canada, there's been fires and temperatures in Canada reaching to 121 degrees Fahrenheit. There's been a heat wave in Washington, in Washington, in Seattle. I didn't even know about that recently. But we have to stop all of these things from happening. That I've been, well, as I've said innumerable times in <clears throat> public uh, uh, public forums, that I've been looking for a change for 50 years. I've worked uh, with social welfare organizations, with human rights organizations, civil rights organizations, uh, political organizations, and as I have indicated, nothing seems to be changing. Nothing seems to be working on behalf of the, the poor. We still have an ever-increasing number of people in poverty. We still have ever-increasing amounts of injustice based on this system, which is just, in so many ways, it just takes advantage of situations because money drives it as opposed to morality or a sense of purpose or a sense of humanity. And that it's got to be a change uh, before this earth, earth is destroyed completely. And that's how I feel. And that's why I'm contributing. Hi, hi everybody. Okay, I'm Haitian. 
I'm, I was born in that country, a river. I'm a citizen of the world. No, we are fighting against the capitalism, imperialism system, or wherever it is. Wherever it is. Uh, what do we need now? We need an actual revolution. Uh, we we need a people also. We got a lot of a lot of a lot of things here. We have posters to see. We have T-shirts to see. We need contribution for the revolution. Like you can see, like like you can see, revolution nothing less. La revolution in nada menos. La revolution in the world. That we need here. That we need in Haiti. Revolution nothing less. And to do that, to make it. To make it, to make the revolution possible, we must contribute some. We must contribute. Uh, we need money. We need also people. That, that's what. That's 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 what we need. That's the reason we are here. Thank you for those statements. Those are all people from New York. Um, and I think that both showed some of the creativity that can go into raising funds, how raising funds as part of spreading the word about this revolution. And I thought the last person captured the simplicity of this really well. We need people and we need funds and we need funds to reach the people. Uh, so keep contributing. We are at $11,131 toward our $25,000 goal. And we're not stopping here. This is, you know, we, we, and this is not just sort of a periodic thing we do to raise funds for the revolution. This has got to become part of, of how we're stepping all the time, putting the needs of the revolution to people and challenging them and struggling with them and uniting with them when they step in to contribute to meet those needs. And one of the things about fundraising is wherever you are, whatever life difficulties you have, all the ways that the system throws up obstacles to stepping into the revolution, giving and raising funds is something that everyone can do. Those here, pass me the revolutionary change jars. This revolutionary change jar, this can be in your house. When you come, you know, this can be sitting on your, on your, uh, you know, where you drop your keys when you walk in your house, the little vestibule place, this can sit there. Or you can take it to your church. Or if you have, if we work in a hospital, you can take it to your hospital, or you can take it to your kids' uh, uh, school, uh, school bake sale, whatever it is, you can take this and spread it and say, look, I carry around this revolutionary change jar because I want to see revolutionary change. And that's going to take people contributing. And you can ask people for funds, you can raise the funds, you can put change in there and there. And then, and like Michelle said earlier, when then once a month, you can go collect or once every couple of weeks, then people can collect those revolutionary change jars from the people in a neighborhood or a housing project or in a school district or whatever it is. And that way you're also building up the revolutionary organization to be able to build up the networks we need to be able to make a revolution. Um, and so, uh, like I said, when you're asking for funds, you're spreading the word about this revolution. And you're, you know, when you, when you ask people to make a sacrifice, that's gonna surface their questions and differences. And, and like I said a couple of days ago on the RNL show, we want to surface people's questions and differences. We want to have that discussion and struggle with people about why we need an actual revolution, why nothing less than this revolution will come anywhere close to dealing with the unnecessary and needless horrors that are that are facing this planet the person talked about the fact that there's all these wildfires germany is underwater like this is only gonna get worse people exponentially worse and it's completely unnecessary and we can do something about it if we had an actual revolution if we could run society in a whole different economic basis and that is and if you give $50 or more, you can get a copy of this constitution written by Bob Avakian that lays out how that's possible, how you would organize society in a whole different economic basis with a whole different political and social system. Uh, so the other thing, uh, we, the next part we, thing we want to play is on last week's episode of the RNL, the Revolution Nothing Less show, we heard from Joe Veal, who we are thrilled is a part of the National Revolution Tour. Uh, and he talks some about a revolutionary named Willie Mobile Shaw who was part of this revolution under very difficult circumstances. And it's not a segment about fundraising. When you watch it, you'll see why we're playing it on this live stream and, and the sense you get that wherever you're at, whatever difficulties you have, you are part of this revolution. And through spreading the word about and raising funds for this revolution, you're, you're, you're taking responsibility for the future. So let's watch Joe Veal. And there's a lot for us to, to learn from, for how Mobile took out 
this what we need in order to be able to make this revolution. And he, what he took, when people would say, oh, we don't have a leader, we do have a leader. It's Bob Avakian. This is who people need to get with and stuff. This would, and Mobile would find the ways, like I said, to do that. You know, in his, even when he was in a wheelchair, he would find the ways to do that. You know, you know, whenever, you know, nothing, like I said, he wouldn't allow anything to restrict him and his ability, you know, to be able to take the people like what they need and to bring them into this, bring them into the revolution so they could, you know, do what needs to be like done, become a part of doing what needs to be done, no matter like what your situation like is, because we all have different things going on like with us. Everybody has, has that, you know, some people's on parole, whatever and stuff, you know. You know, some people, you know, they got, you know, they, they got children, they, they need childcare or whatever like this here and stuff, you know. People have a people, some people they're working, maybe they're working 12, whatever, hours a day or something like that. But Mobile was dealing with those kind of like his own, his own situation. They had real constrictions like on him. that constricted him, but he didn't allow that to constrict and restrain him from like taking what two people what they needed, which is again revolution, which is again Bob Avakian and his leadership. He found the ways to like to do that. And it's really important that people like take that up like today, exactly because the situation that we're living in like today. So we need more mobiles. That's why I wrote like what I wrote in this tribute back then. Who's going to step up to fill those shoes? And that we need millions and millions more to be like mobile. That's even more true today than it was back then, exactly because the situation has changed. It's a different situation. And we really could have a it could open up that potential, and we can't afford to miss it. And, and not missing it means acting, you know, it means acting, it means modeling what Mobile Shaw did, you know. And, 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 and any and everybody can do that, you know, you know and, and become like him. And, and, and in doing that, Mobile changed. Mobile grew up one way. He grew up in the projects. He went to the pen. You know, he, had, he did all this, you know, the drug game, a little bit, dabbling in that a little bit here and there. He did all of like that there. But when he, but Mobile changed, you know, when, once he started becoming part of the revolution, then he, you will see, he, as I said, he became like an international. His identity no longer was that. His identity was the masses of humanity. His identity was people there in the Philippines and Nepal. His identity was the Latino people who are in a similar situation as black people. His identity was the oppressed and exploited people of the world and what they like need in order to get free, the leadership that they need. That's who like Mobile like came in the course of, you know, fighting against like this system and taking up that revolutionary uh, uh, leadership and approach to fighting that. And becoming a follower of Bob Avakian, B.A., by becoming a follower of B.A., Mobile himself, like he changed and transformed, and he helped others change and transform in the, in the course of that. And he inspired us all to want to change and transform like more so we, can, so we can contribute more to what needs to be done. And that is to overthrow this fucking system and shit, you know? So there's a lot, you know, you know, there's a lot to learn, and there's, you know, and this is all the reasons why, why, why the repost or the reprint, the, the you know, this article and these uh, tributes from from BA as well as like myself to to Mobile today at this like time, because it's so timely, it's so like needed, like now. What he Mobile like did, you need, you need thousands doing that. Just think about it. You should just think about it for yourself. Thousands doing like what, what Mobile like did. What that would like mean today in this, in, the, in this society and in the world today. Especially like people like from the bottom who they say can't do nothing. People that's from the bottom in these ghettos and these barrios and these projects who they, you know, the systems can't like do like, who the system says can't do nothing or not worth any like thing. But it could be worth a uh, Worth a lot. It, it, life counts for a lot. It count for the, count for count for everything. It can count for humanity. That's what the mobile became. He became a representative of the emancipation of humanity. 
So people can't like change. He changed and he can't, he changed and he became like a leader in this revolution. Yeah, I mean, I just want to echo what Joe was just saying, you know, what would it mean if there if there are a thousand mobiles, you know, a thousand people that or more, you know, mm -hmm. that actually are in many different ways and very significant ways spreading this revolution and actually transforming themselves as they're getting into Baba Vakian, you know, like that's a that's a big deal, you know, the fact that, you know, when people actually do come to understand that what is in in this in this leadership you know and i actually want to encourage people you know as joe said on the on the revcom.us website there is you know the statement you know from uh joe where he's actually reading that and 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 it's it's very heartfelt i was very moved when i read that that statement you know and somebody who had very difficult you know life conditions but actually found the very you know, ways to you know recognize wow we have something in this leadership like people got to know you know and joe described it as like it's like a, a a a kid that that discovers a candy shop you know wants everybody to like you know to have like that's a big deal you know and and you know and i actually want to go to um this short clip of a chicago uh text message that actually does uh show uh you know people that themselves are in very difficult life conditions, you know, but that actually are continuing to spread this revolution, you know, and are not because they actually do understand what is in this leadership and the fact that people need to know about this and are not, you know, uh, are not finding the excuses to, you know, to not be in this revolution. But, you know, so I'll, why don't we go to that real quick? And then I have some more things to say about that. morning i'm not going to make it out today i've been talking to more people on this side of town about the march and turning them on to the revcom.us website seems like people like the idea of getting rid of this system for good this one guy i talked to from the bus stop to his destination said that when i talked he could see what i'm saying people need that visual conversation one person from work wants to join the Revolution Club and a few more have the website. And one brother said he's read many books by BA. He also told me that the book I've been reading, Democracy Can't We Do Better Than That by Barbara Vakian, was a damn good read. I'm planting the seeds. Everybody's got a role and a place and is welcome in this revolution. So that is an invitation for you to join the Revolution Club today, to go to work at making this revolution now. That's right. Like This is the kind of movement that we're talking about building, you know, from the people that are most oppressed to other, you know, to the doctors, to the attorneys, you know, who actually are being brought together around this revolution. And, you know, this is, you know, a, an example of the, the, both the people that are being brought forward, but also the potential of those that actually need, that still don't know about this revolution, that still need to, you know, engage and find out that there is this kind of leadership that actually, you know, I'll share this, like somebody that, that we've been working with has said, uh, confronting very difficult life conditions has said, look, I don't get, I haven't given up because I know Baba Vakian doesn't give up on, on us, you mm -hmm. know, and actually does understand this, this thing about, this leader that actually sees the potential in those most oppressed that actually need to transform themselves as a part of how they're transforming all of society. That's very important and very significant. And there needs to be thousands and millions of people like Mobile, like this person in Chicago, and like the person that I'm that I'm talking about that need to find out about this revolution. And this is what your funds are going to. This is why, you know, this movement needs to be funded. This is why, you know, people like myself, like Atlas that you saw, like Annie, you know, that that need to be funded, you know, that actually, you know, so that we can continue to to do this kind of work. I can say for myself, I used to like work full time, you know, and, and it actually makes a huge difference that I was able to quit my job and able to throw into this revolution full time and go out to, you know, to the neighborhoods, to go out to the different parts and actually reach people with this revolution. You know, it matters that I'm able to take the time to be on that truck, as you saw, <laughs> you know, on the June 12 marches, you know, and reach those people, you know, it, it really, it really makes a difference. And, you know, and it really matters that 
And I wasn't somebody who, you know, as many people will say, when they first met me, I was, I didn't say a word, <laughs> you know, but that's the kind of transformation that people, yeah, <laughs> there's a the kind of transformation that people actually go through. And when, when we do actually understand what difference this makes and, and the kind of impact and that, that this can have, um, that, that we transform ourselves and that we put this shyness to the side and actually, you know, do go and take this out to the people that desperately need this, but then also all those people who have the, the ability and the capacity to be able to, to give larger donations, all of those things being brought together, you know, it's very significant and a very, you know, uh, impactful thing in a society that like, uh, pits those two sections against each other, you know, that trains these, you know, people that are better off to look at people like myself and others, you know, as like animals or whatever, you know, but actually like being brought together around this revolution, around funding this revolution, around, you know, uh, learning more about this leadership and actually going to work on transforming all of this now. Yeah, and I think this is actually even through the funds is part of how people can all come together yeah. is it's part of how you're you're knitting together a whole national movement for revolution is through the fundraising. Look, the funds alone are not going to get you the, the thousands of Michelles and mobiles, but it actually is part of how we're going to reach people throughout all of society is to be able to contend on a national scale, to be able to project this revolution, to capture people's imaginations, to be able to struggle with people in the ways necessary to, to, to um, uh, break open people's imaginations and aspirations and dreams. And it's out also through the process of fundraising that you're able to organize and reach those thousands of mobiles and Michelles. It's through the process of asking people to contribute, to raise funds themselves. This is part of how you're building up the organized forces for revolution, spreading the word about the revolution, dealing with the problem, the fact that far too people know about this and are with it, struggling with people over what, what's worth sacrificing. Is it, is, is, should I just be, a, be, be about me and mine and me and my children, whether it be that's uh, it, people in the neighborhoods of the oppressed thinking that or the people who are really well off and thinking that like, or are people going to actually step into and contribute to and sacrifice to something that's about the emancipation of all of humanity. So st stick with us. If you're watching this, stick with us. We've got some more. We've got an exciting video. Okay. So we've just heard that there is a, uh, a 2000, oh, a $2,600 donation that's coming in from Harlem. And we're getting video of that shortly of the person who's giving that donation. So stay tuned. I'm, but thank you to the person who gave that generous amount. And I'm very eager to see what they have to say about why they're giving that generous amount. So stay tuned um, for that. And we've also got several other statements we want to share. Um, this was something we wanted to share that's a really creative way, I'm going to put my reading glasses on, a really creative way that people both were working to raise funds and capture attention. And so we're going to play a, a, a video slideshow or a, a photo slideshow of a cake that was made for the anti-July 4th celebration in, in a particular city. And I have a statement. That, that we're gonna read along with this. It's about a cake that someone made that was an F America cake. And I'm being careful of my words because uh, we are still being broadcast on the community radio show in South Carolina. So, um, uh, okay, so I made the F America cake because I wanted to capture the juxtaposition between the wholesome family oriented veneer of the holiday and the truth of what America really is. Uh, so I, while I'm reading the statement, okay, yes, good. You can see the pictures of the of the cake and and the creative uh, 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 gathering that this inspired. Um, so they wanted to to uh, you know celebrating July Fourth, co-signing American nationalism even passively means being proud of the centuries of endless death, destruction, and despair that America has visited on the entire world. I wanted to capture current events in America and the political response articulated in the five stops and in the declaration in an accessible and in a saccharine way. And they mean that literally saccharine. Uh, they said, I wanted to evoke the emotions that we're not supposed to feel on a holiday like this, horror and disgust, as well as humor, delight, and the recognition that things are not what they seem. 
Um, so they wanted to be an antidote to American nationalism and propaganda and to communicate resistance without using words. And I think you can see, so here you have this cake, it's an American flag, but they also illustrated all the five stops. That's those little green balls are COVID, uh, the uh, wars for empire in strawberry syrup. Um, the uh, held together by a big pool of strawberry syrup blood. Um, so the cake got a lot of attention and created many openings for discussion with a diverse group of people. One woman was a recent immigrant to the US from the Caribbean and spoke about how America seems like a beautiful fancy house on the outside, but when you see the inside, it's a horrific mess. Uh, they invited people to step on the fake blood splattered flags that they'd thrown on the ground. So people also had the opportunity to discharge pent up feelings about the system and resist their conditioning. Uh, to respect the symbols of America and of capitalism, imperialism. Uh, and they wanted to show the conflict between the rulers that's created an opening for the possibility of revolution. And they did that through the wars, through the little toys with their face down in the strawberry syrup. Uh, and then there was, they said there was palpable joy on people's faces and in being invited to step on the flags. It was a joyful and impactful anti-July 4th. And I just wanted to, we wanted to show this really creative cake so you can see all the different kinds of ways that you can illustrate, deliciously illustrate the horrors of this system and the need and potential for revolution. So that was from uh, one area, people who are with a revolution club. I thought it, we thought it was a really creative thing we wanted to share with people. Um, Okay, so then I want to read a poetic statement from a donor that came in. This is somebody who contributed to the National Revolution Tour, and they said this. They said, blast from the past on the road to the future. I remember Malcolm and Stokely and Rap Brown and Bobby and Huey and Eldridge and Chairman Mao and the struggle of third world countries for national liberation. I remember what it was like to have militants leading the way for those millions of us who were desperate and also paradoxically enough, brimming with hope. But then the bottom fell out and before you know it, 50 years have gone by. And in the meantime, BA has continued the fight, gravitating toward the hard spots, advancing a new and much needed synthesis for the science of communist revolution, forging a vanguard force that's now preparing to lead millions when the conditions are ripe to righteously do the dog in the heartland of the Babylonian madness. Once again, the sisters and brothers march, no longer clad in beautiful black leather jackets or berets or dashikis. Instead, we have those exquisite t-shirts. Yet the echoes resound. This time, 50 years later, we really have a chance because we have the leadership we need. That leadership is building its ranks, even as US imperialism lurches, then sprints, then stumbles. And here I am catching you on the flip side doing yet again everything I can think of to seize the time. Shall we dance? <laughs> so thank you for those words. Thank you for your donation. And hell yes, we shall dance. Uh, <laughs> and that's what we need. We need to dance to the beat of revolution. We need a new culture. We need, we need a new spirit. And this is like, it's so possible. People can lift their sights and imagine a whole better world. What could it change if people watch that video from Bob Avakian? Let's imagine, let's step out of the world that they have us living in and let's imagine what a different world could be like. Let's lift our sights and not be rhyming about degrading each other and dogging each other and doing one-upping each other. Let's actually imagine a whole different way the world could be and let's come together and raise our sights and fight for that world. And in order to make that happen, there needs to be a vanguard force the rev comps out here struggling with people, bringing people the message of revolution and organizing them now for revolution for real. And this is what your funds go to. It's to support the people on the National Revolution Tour. It's to support, the, to, to print all the materials that we need. It's for the housing, it's for the lights, it's for the sound, it's for the cameras that are filming us right now. We need a silent air conditioner because I can tell you it is hot as hell in this studio right now. <laughs> and they've really creatively got the ice packs on the equipment so it doesn't overheat so you're able to stay tuned with us. But this is like, you know, it's, it's, it's great, they're creative, they're really determined tech crew, but we need to be able to operate on a whole other level and that's gonna require your funds. It's gonna require financial support and it's gonna require reaching people for, for to donating to the revolution all the time.
like consistently and constantly. And this is what's needed. This is what's on us to do and to change and to fight forward. So we're at $11,131. We've gotten that donation coming in from Harlem. It's not been added to the tally yet, but it will be soon. So keep donating. Um, we want to re. We want to play a couple more videos from June twelfth, and like this was a really. It's it. This is to show people all the ways different people are stepping into the revolution. It's to show you the breadth of the volunteers on the National Revolution Tour, the people in the Revolution Club in Los Angeles. So we're going to play a couple more clips from June twelfth, the march to show the world that we're getting organized for revolution, nothing less. This has had a, a, a significant impact in some of the neighborhoods of Los Angeles, but that's just the beginning. This needs to reach a whole other level. That's going to, like we've been saying here today, require your financial support. Uh, so let's watch these video clips from June 12th, uh, people reading basics. Uh, once again, the handbook for revolution, which you can get with a $50 donation. You can get it for a friend. Um, uh, so let's watch these clips of people reading quotes from basics from June 12th. These people are not fit to be the caretakers of the earth. We have one planet, y'all. And it's in the wrong hands right now. In a different society, once we sweep this system off the face of the earth, we would be fit caretakers of this planet. If you can conceive of a world without America, without everything America stands for and everything it does in the world, then you are already taking great strides and become to get at least a glimpse of a whole new world. If you can envision a world without any imperialism, exploitation, oppression, and the whole philosophy that rationalizes it, a world without divisions into classes or even different nations, and all the narrow-mindedness, selfishness, outmoded ideas that uphold this. If you can envision all this, then you have the basis for proletarian internationalism. And once you have raised your sights to all this, how could you not feel compelled to take an active part in the world historic struggle to realize it? Why would you want to lower your sights to anything less? Basics, handbook for revolution. I love that uh, reading and that spirit and that determination. And again, you see the potential of people stepping into the revolution, taking responsibility for revolution, taking responsibility to figure out how we're going to reach people with revolution. And why the hell would you want to lower your sights to anything less? Um, okay, so while that was playing, we just heard that we just got this a, a video that somebody recorded, I think, while we were doing this live stream, and they are giving $2,600, which is an incredibly generous donation, and they're challenging you to match it. So we want to go to that video now. We're going we're gonna to watch it all together live. And today, go ahead now. I have donated my entire stimulus check to the movement. And today, I donated two thousand two hundred dollars to the movement. And uh, well, I could have used I could have used that money for other things. So I challenge anybody out there to match this donations that I gave or superseded and I'm going to be donating every time I get my check to the movement. Anything else? So I'm asking everybody to dig deep into your pockets like I did in mine and pulled out $2,200 but that's digging deep. And I know you people can do that out there. Because if I have that money, I know there's a lot of people out there that have more than that and can give. But give whatever you can. This revolution is very important.
Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Well, thank you for that. Um, this revolution is very important, and uh, your donation really matters. It's very inspiring to us sitting here. It's inspiring to the people on the National Revolution Tour. And, um, you know, people should match that. People should exceed that. Uh, people should give what they can. And yes, dig deep. Uh, whether that means you can give your whole stimulus check, as, as generous as that is, whether it means you can give five times your stimulus check, whether it means you can give an eighth of your stimulus check. Give what you can. It really matters. It's what's required to make an actual revolution, to reach people, to organize forces for revolution for real. You know, I think this is a, a, a good, you know, one of, the, one of the critiques we heard recently from somebody in the social movements, and we are, you know, I, I hope that came through earlier. This is part of who we're reaching. We're not only reaching people who are protesting, but that's part of people we're reaching. And there's a lot of people who want to see the uprising that happened last year continue. And there's a lot of struggle we're having with people about reform versus revolution, about why revolution, nothing less, about why they need to become followers of Bob Bavakian to really lift their sights to dealing with the whole system of capitalism, imperialism, and bringing into being a whole different world. Uh, but one of the things we heard from some of these people in the social movements is, we heard the Revcoms are raising funds from poor communities. And I just, I have to say, I had to laugh. Hell yes, we are, because the, we're not social workers, and because the masses of people are capable of taking responsibility, not just for their to end their own oppression, but to end all oppression, to emancipate all of humanity. And people are responsible. They're responsible to figure out how we're going to spread the word of this revolution. They're responsible to figure out to solve the problems we're facing in making revolution. Michelle was talking earlier about how we're pulling people together to wrestle with how are we going to break the youth, who 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 you know, actually do have aspirations for a better world, but who are caught up in this endless cycle of revenge. How are we going to break them out of fighting and killing each other and lifting their sights to fighting for a whole better world? These are problems of the revolution that some savior is not going to come solve for us. But it's only the people themselves stepping into this and taking responsibility for the future, taking responsibility to figure out how we're going to reach other people to raise the funds needed for this revolution, how we're going to, how we're going to spread the word about this revolution, what creative ideas, what forms of agitation and argumentation. What are the things we have to speak to? This is not like somebody else somewhere else is going to figure this out and all you should do is become the recipient or the receptacle of revolutionary ideas. Hell no, you're responsible. So we, we don't, one is we wanted to thank you again for that really generous donation. We want to encourage uh, people to match that donation. We are at $13,772. And look, this really matters. And we are going to continue this fund drive through Wednesday. It went from July 12th to July 21st. That's this coming Wednesday. So whatever we don't raise today here on this live stream, we're determined to go out and raise in the next three days because it's what's needed. It's the bare minimum of what's needed, to be honest, to be able to reach people with this revolution. So stay tuned in. We've got a little more here for you today, and then we're going to get organized together to reach even more people. we got a lot of inspiring messages that can be played uh, to, on trade excuse me, on, on, on train platforms that could be played in, in gatherings. Invite your, you know, if, if everyone you know has been vaccinated, invite people over on Tuesday night and say, you know what, this is a last minute dinner celebration. I wanna he have people come together and hear about the National Revolution Tour and to contribute to the National Revolution Tour. So invite people over, call your cousin, call your high school friend, uh, post it on Facebook and tag a bunch of people asking them to give. Have me or Michelle on your Instagram. We'll do an Instagram live in the next three days and, and call on your followers and, and fans and friends to contribute to the revolution. There's a lot of ideas, a lot of ways we can reach people and the reaching people to give and raise funds for the revolution is part of spreading revolution and getting organized for revolution in a rare moment when revolution could really be possible. Um, so we wanted to play a kind of, uh, Michelle and I were, were laughing about this critique we got, because it just, it so captures what a central difference, how different the Revcoms are from social workers and how different Bob Avakian is from all the other leaders and politicians that just go on ad nauseum about the way things are, telling you, you really have no role to play except vote for me and I'll set you free. Uh, so this is, we wanted to play this clip from Bob Avakian. It's a short clip. It's a little over two minutes where he speaks to the revolutionary potential of those most oppressed and how and why it requires scientific leadership. 
So let's play that clip. It doesn't matter that people no good to feed them pablum and to condescend to them and think that they're not capable of understanding the reality that they're caught up in and how they can fight to radically change it. In fact, I'm in favor of going up to some of these, straight up to some of these hardcore youth out here right now and telling them, okay, look, if you like things the way they are right now, if you like the conditions they got you in, if you like the way they do you, if you don't give a damn about people all over the world being done the same way you're being done and treated as less than human the way you're being treated, then go on. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to say to you. You go on and do what you want to do. But if you are sick and tired of this, you don't want to live this way anymore. You don't want to be treated like this. You don't want a world where people are being treated like this. Then you need to get serious and get with this revolution. I'm not for, I'm not for babying the masses of people. They don't need more social workers. They don't need more condescending saviors. They need people to go straight up and tell them this is what we have to do to get out of this mess and to liberate not just ourselves, but everybody throughout the world that's in the same kind of mess we're in. Now, Basics 317 speaks to the fact that many people don't believe that the youth caught up in selling drugs and all kinds of other mess can become revolutionaries and can play a key role as part of the driving force of this revolution. Basics says, yes, they can do this. But it goes on to say, not as they are now, and not without struggle. They weren't always selling drugs and killing each other, and the rest of it. And they don't have to be into all that in the future. Ask yourself, how does it happen that you go from beautiful children to supposedly irredeemable monsters in a few years? It's because of the system and what it does to people, not because of unchanging and unchangeable human nature. I love this clip. <laughs> I just think like, I mean, just think about who else like views the masses in this way, you know, either it's one side of like, oh, you poor little delicate thing, we have to do everything for you or you know, the other yeah. side, which, you know, I've had this experience when in high school, like I was cussed out by my teacher because I couldn't comprehend Romeo and Juliet. Like it's, that's what you get under this system, you know, and to have such a leader that actually does recognize the potential of people, but, you know, and, and not to go in one of those directions, but actually to say, you know, he's for one for going right up to these youth and actually challenging them you know because they have the capacity of actually transforming and understanding you know the world you know like this is it's i can't say enough what a big deal it is that we have this leadership and that people need to know that we have this leadership this you know it's not just mine and any's leadership it's like the the leadership of the people you know and and this has got to go everywhere people have got to know you know, about this leader, people have got to know that, you know, and again, not as an informational way, in an informational way, but for people to take this up to themselves, dig into the work that he has actually done and to and to go to work on transforming all of society now, right? That's not like some off, you know, some, some time later, that's now, you know, and that's what people on the National Revolution Tour are doing. That's what you who's watching need to take up yourself and actually as part of contributing funds, as part of going to other people. And, and, and you know, if you're watching this live stream, you can say a very basic thing about why you tuned in, about why you're supporting the revolution tour. You know, we've gotten a number of statements of people, you know, why they're giving, why they're going to other people. You're capable of going and, mm -hmm. and talking to other people about why they should donate to this revolution. You know, this has to spread in that kind of way. And as Annie said, from now until, you know, Wednesday, people should go all out. You know, let's go have tables in, you know, neighborhoods. Let's go have tables outside of hospitals. Let's go have tables, mm -hmm. you know, um, in your downtown areas, like everywhere, you know, and have just a basic sign 
that says donate to the revolution. You know, that was that was the very basic sign that some of us had in South Central a few days ago, just donate to the revolution. And we put it up and all kinds of people just came through and gave money. You know, it's very basic and very significant ways that, you know, people need to continue to raise money. And again, and it shouldn't be just this week of fundraising. It should be an ongoing thing. You know, if you didn't, if you tuned in today or if you're watching this live stream, not live, <laughs> you know, and you have ideas and you have, you know, um, skills, right? If you can make art, if you can make food, if you can make, you know, poetry, if you, whatever your skills or your ideas are, do it, you know, do it and bring other people together, show them this live stream, show them the RNL show, you know, which, you know, Atlas had some very important things to say about the role that this that this show is playing, you know, just watching my friends here behind the cameras, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 going through this <laughs> very, very hot room. <laughs> And, but but you know because people need to know about this you know and are contributing their time or contributing you know their skills you know I don't know anything about what I'm saying all this all this tech stuff but you know we need more more of this you know and that's going to require funds you know that's going to require um, you know the thirty thousand that Annie said is the bare minimum of what the tour you know needs to function and we don't just need to function we need to impact we need to go way beyond you know what what's what, what's the bare minimum you know to have buses you know imagine if what difference it will make if these bus ads these buses that go through all over from south central la to downtown la you know if they were going through and actually you know had ads with for the rnl show all kinds of people would be watching you know all kinds of people would be knowing about this revolution all kinds of people you know we all know how long <laughs> and I'm saying both of experience on myself, but then others, how long people spend on YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. watching videos, you know, on social media, like people need to be watching the RNL show. People need to be going on the RevCom.us website. People need to be watching videos of Bob Bacon, you know, this is in order to be able to, you know, advertise this, to be able to like, you know, reach all kinds of people in all different stratas, that's going to require lots of money, you know, and that's, you know, what, what we've raised here so far has been very important and very significant, but we got to be thinking big. We got to be thinking about, you know, multiplying this, you know, and all the people that came together today, you know, mm -hmm. just on this live stream, you know, from the people that are, are cooking dinner, you know, and selling $10 plates in South Central to, you know, the people that, you know, are, are donating their stimulus check, you know, as we just saw, right? Like all kinds of people from different parts, of you know this country you know that are actually being brought together to raise funds to learn more about this revolution right to to see seeing each other you know and 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 actually you know though and and all of you who have been texting your friends who have been you know calling your friends who have been dming people like this is all a part of the kind of movement that we need but again it has to it has to grow it has to have impact it has to you know again that money that you see on the screen, it has to be like, whatever, 10 times that, you know, yeah. not, not to limit the, the amount that we need to raise, yeah. but. And we do look, we, we, we were at $13,902. That is a little more than halfway towards our goal. That really matters, but it's also going to matter that we go from here between now and Wednesday and raise the rest of the funds and that we make fundraising a critical and essential part of the movement for revolution in everything we're doing, like breathing in and out. People have to know about the leadership they have for this revolution. They have to know their responsibility in digging into that leadership and, and to enabling others to find out about this leadership to spread it. People have to know about their role and responsibility in stepping into the revolution, and they have to give funds to reach others with this revolution. This is what we have to bring people. We have to make fundraising an essential part, like breathing in and out of the way in which the revolution is stepping and getting organized so that we can reach the people we need, so that we can seize on this, this incredibly special and rare moment. Um, so we just wanna recap a couple things. We wanna remind people that these premiums are still good after the live stream. If you give $50 or more, um, if you give uh, $25 or more, you can get three of those individual handmade crochet flowers. If you give $50 or more, you can get one of these, I think there's three of them, these beautiful baskets. And there was a lot of time and energy and love and heart put into these baskets from someone who cannot 
run with the revolution out in the streets and who has, does not have a lot of resources, but who wants to see this revolution succeed because they recognize that the hope for humanity in the future is concentrated in this revolution. And so they put their heart and creativity into making these beautiful crochet flowers. So those are premiums that you can give. There's a young member of the Revolution Club who made those prints. If you donate um, $50 or more, you can ask for one of those prints, one of the abstracts, the uh, portrait of George Floyd. If you give $200 or more, you can ask for a custom portrait and send them a photo of someone you want a portrait of, and they'll make a portrait custom made. Um, so that, that's, those are those premiums. And then there's all the books from Bob Avakian. There's the basics, there's the new communism, there's the constitution, there's Bob Avakian's memoir and away with all gods. These are, um, priceless. <laughs> These are works that you should give for, that you should spread around, that you should get to others. Um, so we wanted to remind people of those premiums and we wanted to end with this from the declaration and call, um, which uh, ends the short version of, of, of this declaration. It says this, it says, to come back to basics, we need revolution, a real revolution. We cannot afford to waste these rare times and circumstances that could be ripened into a real chance to make revolution. We cannot afford to squander the rare and precious leadership we have for this revolution. We have to get busy to build the movement and the organized forces for revolution all over the country and work together tirelessly for this revolution, to actively prepare for the situation where this system can be brought down and something much better, to be, and something much better brought into being. So that requires your energy and creativity and it requires your financial support so that we don't squander the rare moment we have, so that we don't squander the leadership we have. And if you just think about what it would mean to the people of the world, if there were a revolution in this country, it would mean everything. It is literally the future. While the seas are rising and the planet is burning, it is the future. While the fascists are organizing, Fund this revolution so humanity has a fighting shot to really, really get free. So spread the word about this. We wanna thank everybody who tuned in. Thank you for everyone who gave to, so that we have been able to raise $13,902. We got a lot of work to do, people. Let's get busy. Let's spread the word about this. There's nothing more important to do. There's nothing more joyful. Um, thank you for the RNL crew for, for sweating your... Uh, <laughs> Sweating it through. <laughs> Sweating it through, <laughs> literally. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you to everyone who tuned in, who gave, who made your art, who sent your statements. Uh, there were a number of other statements we weren't able to read. We want to thank people for sending them in, for, for your creative ideas. Uh, if, you're, if you're still tuned in on the radio, you can call 323-671-9839. You can write to us at getorganizedforrevolutiontour at gmail.com. DM us on social media at the RevComs. Give on K, uh, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Go to RevCom.us. Uh, you can find us at the RevComs on Patreon. Let's spread the word of the RNL show, the Revolution Nothing Less show, and let's go out and change the world, people. Thank you.